They had like upset potential. They were looking decent. Bro, you what remember happened? we joked about the Patty P, you need to shut your damn mouth. This man, Shotzi, in stage two was an absolute superstar. Dropping 1.7s, 1.5s, winning map solo dolo. Okay, wait, Ant, is Shotzi a superstar? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Dope Check episode 11 featuring me, Ace the Stocksman. I'm here with Tactical Rad and the EU GOAT, Trey Zero. How are we feeling today, boys? Absolutely sensational, Ace. I can't believe it. We've had another weekend. Thankfully, we actually got some games that are interesting. I couldn't believe my eyes. Friday and Saturday happened. And I was like, what am I actually doing watching this bloody league? But thankfully, Sunday came around. We got some good matches, some interesting results, and some big storylines, baby. I'm not going to lie, going into the major, it feels like we finally have a good league on our hands again at the top. Because these recent results have thrown lots of things into question. And I'm, I'm buzzing for it. Listen. Sunday was probably the best day of COD we've had in terms of unpredictable matches. It doesn't necessarily mean it was the best matches of all time, but it was the hardest to predict. I think we could clearly see that from the breaking point, you know, what people predicted. <laughs> no shock, I finished on top of that too, because um, <laughs> I am one of the smartest. But yeah, nah, it's been a good day of COD. Uh, good weekend of COD, sorry. Um, it's been a bit of drama beforehand that we'll get into. Uh, I think we're in for a very good show today, hopefully. Nothing pops off on the timeline whilst we do the show because <laughs> usually mind. that takes it usually it takes it from a two and a half hour show to about a five hour show, and then me and Rabbit <laughs> are at three AM thinking what the fuck's going on. So. <laughs> no, it's an hour earlier for us today, Trey, because daylight savings is a thing. Shout out everyone from Okay, Ace. Is it Arizona or where is it that doesn't bloody do daylight savings? Because I it always throws me off every year, right? Because this time of year, we have two weeks where the UK doesn't do daylight savings yet. America does. Mm -hmm. So it's only four hour difference right now, which means for me and Trey, it's an hour earlier, which I absolutely love this time of year because I get to bed, go to bed early on the match days. But I swear daylight savings is fraudulent. I, I think it should be scrapped. I don't believe in it. I think it's a conspiracy theory all around. I don't know what's good with it. <laughs> I don't know what's good with it. All I know is tomorrow is Ramadan. So... To any Muslims out there celebrating, uh, uh, you know, Ramadan Mubarak to you. And hopefully you have a good fast going into tomorrow and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, the next couple of shows, I, I don't know what I'm going to be like. I might be a zombie on there on the first one. But it, it's really exciting stuff there. Cod, I, I will say I'm a legend in one regard, right? Maybe I, I won the last pickums. I will say a legend there. Also, I got though, a legend, bro. Listen, like, this is, listen, he, listen. Gave all that, he gave all that nice hosts and shit. Listen, I, I'm a legend in the second it, regard it, that anytime there's a one off pickums, I'm the only one that gets the one off pickums. The Miami pick, you're looking at the only guy who predicted they were going to win. And I did that with Seattle. That's my thing. My thing is the one off. So Trey might be getting all of them or might be getting the most, but I'm getting the hardest ones. I'm just, I got to put that to the sky. But coming into it, first of all, we kind of have a lingering. Uh, drama that, that we found got some updates on uh, scrap addressing the drama with Draza um, and on his stream he actually gave us a bit of an update about about it and kind of went into it a bit more so let's hop in to a video of him addressing the drama with Draza anything at it so at a game right the whole thing with me and Draz what sucks about all this is that I was actually like I fucked up the reason I'll explain why I delete all the tweets and stuff like that. I was good friends with Jaws. All right, right now, I understand. I've already DM'd him this. He's not going to come out or say anything, but, like, I'll tell you. I DM'd him. I said, bro, I completely understand. I fucked up. You know, I took it too far. You know, if the line was, like, the 50-yard line, I probably hit about, like, the opposite 30. You know what I mean? So, like, it was a bit too far. Okay? Not a bit. It was far. It was too far. You know what I mean? And the reason is, bro, if this was just some random person that, like, I wasn't close with or anything, I would have just fucking, like, who gives a fuck? I barely even know the guy, you know what I mean? So, like, this is different, because me and Draz, I've known this kid for years. We play together. We're fucking cool as fuck. Or, like, we were cool as fuck for, like, fucking almost three years. And, you know, it sucks in that part. 
anything added. So, uh, first reactions from Rab or Trey to to Scrap addressing the, the drama. I Rab got this. Trey? Yeah, I got this. We had this discussion um, the last time when all this drama hopped out, and I was like, I'm not gonna say what I said, okay? Because respectfully, I was, you know, everyone was like, whoa, whoa, chill out, Trey, and I didn't mean it like that, right? So. But firstly, but do you know, that again. Okay. yeah, no, we ain't gonna do that again. All right, I'm not gonna get myself cancelled. I've had enough of that. Um, firstly, I, firstly, I respect the fact that he's actually gone out and apologized to him, just like I said he should have. If he is, for starters, if he's been friends with him for years, that is just, you know, disrespectful. If he's been friends with him for years, you don't do that to someone you've been friends with. Secondly, you know, he realizes he's fucked up. Manned up, told him about it in DMs. Obviously, I don't know um, if Draz has like accepted it. He's probably accepted the apology, but still told him to fuck off. I don't know how it is. Um, I also he also you know done a tweet yesterday after after the other lost, and you know I think you can probably bring that up. Uh, um, he done a tweet after they after Ultra lost, saying, "What have I done?" <laughs> uh, thinks he's the main character bro. I respect it and you know as much as like as much as like it's funny and stuff like that and uh, honestly I probably did annoy scrap a shit ton in my opinion but you know we'll get into why you know that doesn't really it's not really Draza that's like caused any of it but it's good stuff for the timeline and keeps the storyline going but just on top of like the scrap thing respect for him being a man and actually apologizing I don't know if he's apologized to Keeks. Personally, if he hasn't, I probably still would, but it's probably a bit past that time now. <laughs> I think so... she returned to Twitter, by the way, because she deleted her Twitter account. And now she's back, baby. So, you know. <laughs> but a lot, of people, a lot of people say, like, oh, should he stand on business, turn old, trade him, do it? If this is genuine, like, you know, Drad has been his boy for years and stuff like that, you have to respect the fact that he's going to delete the tweets. He's going to try and repair the, you know, the friendship he had. And if Draza wants to, he will. But I think it's a bit silly over a game of COD. That's what I'll say. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's just... It's funny why Scrappy... Whether that's the reason why Scrappy regretted it or not. Um, interesting to hear, though, that he thinks that... At least based on what he said, if it had been anyone else, he'd have been like, yeah, I don't care. But because it was Draz, and maybe he has some level of respect and friendship with Draz, then he kind of wanted to run it back a little bit or roll it back a little bit. And then tried his best in the immediate aftermath to get the community to shut up about it. Obviously, succeeding on the Zoom with the scum front, but not succeeding when it comes to, you know, a certain other commentary channel on YouTube. Um, and obviously also the show. So, <laughs> you know, fair play to Scrap. I also want to raise a question, though, because it's certainly true that, okay, we had some discussion in the chat about it already about the whole of BZ versus Draza's girlfriend thing, now the fact that they're teammates. Um, just a lot of the reaction that happened after the World Championship in 2022 that we know to be the case. Scrap make it up with Draz. Okay, maybe they're not going to make up. I'm sure there's going to be big drama about it. Like, I don't think it's easy to, to go back on what Scrap's saying, and Draz is definitely going to hold a grudge there um, for some time. And, and Scrap also said later on in, in this little clip that like he's ready for the rivalry. Like He's down for that to be a big rivalry. But of course, people are looking forward and they're thinking, okay, what about next season? Like, let's say Toronto, they won the first event. But let's say Toronto don't win an event for the rest of the year or something, right? And they, they fall off. Uh, maybe they're washed. Okay, I don't think they're washed. We'll obviously talk about them in the series they played against Optic in the coming minutes. But, you know, they've now lost two series in a row. We've seen it before where teams start out really hot. They can't replicate those same levels. And Scrap is undeniably the best player in the league that's not on one of the you know not an optical phase shall we say as the biggest organizations in cod so then people have wondered okay is it possible that scrap could go to another team now i don't want this to happen because i think it's great when you get personalities like scrap that have been coming up through the ultra organization mm -hmm. they make that ultra team interesting creates more storylines and rivalries but if you're optic if you're phase things don't work out surely you've got to look at scrap in the offseason ace when it comes to this drama with Draza, I, we spoke on how it was just some immaturity. Clearly, they're friends, and because Draza was his friend, he probably didn't expect him to come at him sideways uh, and then took it too far. It's two competitors who just don't know the limits to their competition, and they're young, so they're going to take it a little too far. Beyond that, 
um, this is last. This is last week's drama. Let's the pose. Let's go to the question that Rab poses, which is a very interesting one. Optic or phase scrappy? Is that in the future? I would say, yeah. as someone who absolutely says that Scrappy should be the face of the league, that to not have him on Optic or Phase is a criminal offense. You need the face of the league to be on the organizations that are the face of the league. It's kind of a one, two, a one plus one equals two combo. Um, do I see him going to Phase? Honestly, I don't. Um, the only way I see him going to phase is if they decide that Celium is way too slow and they want to break up the roster. Um, I wouldn't think it would be for Draza, although that would just be r hilarious for the TL if that was the case, but I don't see it going that way. More likely than not, though, I could see him going to Optic in place of a Kenny or even potentially a Dashi because we've seen clearly times where Optic have had some precarious situations when it comes to Dashi. Optic scrap seems like it's something that the league would want to see. I'd want to see. Fans would want to see. We'd all want to see, honestly. Um, and although this Optic team is performing well, I'm not saying this is going to happen for sure. Um, it seems like the most suitable place for, her, for him, in my opinion. I'd probably say he's got more chance of being on Optic than Faze just because of what he, you know, he's, he's a content team's dream. Yeah. Really and truthfully, he's the interaction king on Twitter. His streams do very well. Um, do I see him going to Optic for any player right now? No, it would literally have to... Not right now, but like I'm saying, like towards the end of the season, you know, Optic, if they don't win, they make changes. Same as every team, really. If Faze don't win, they make a change. And then, you know, it all depends on, you know, if, if, if Ultra win again towards the end of the season, he probably stays an Ultra. Hmm. Scrappy, Scrappy to me does seem like a winner in terms of like he has that winning mentality. He doesn't care about what team he's on as long as it's the best team in the game. Because obviously, you know, you've got like the optic brand and you've got like you know the winning team or whatever like that. And that, that's like a big choice for people because you go to optic, you know, you get way more benefits than just being on the winning team. So that's always a big one to think about. Um, but I, I think it all just depends on down the end of the road, like end of the season, whoever's. You know, if if Ultra and Optic don't win and Phase do, then I say we'd see Scrappy on Optic. You, I think that would make the most sense. You know what? One thing you said that I want to touch on too is that you say that he's a he's a content team's dream. I feel like Phase needs the help more than Optic does overall. Phase doesn't have a face of the franchise, unfortunately. Celium, Abizi, Simp. And Draza is the closest one to me, but no, none of those players are people that you necessarily want to be the cover of, let's say, your ad campaign. You get what I'm trying to say? Um, yeah. Like a Pred, well, a, a Pred you can have on the face of a Mountain Dew ad, a Scump, uh, a Shotzi. It's kind of a different look. And, and I, I mean that with no disrespect to the FaZe guys at all, but the tiny terrors are not going to be good for the advertising dollars. Whereas you get a scrap on your team, all of a sudden, you know, the investment in someone like him on phase would be where your content can start, you know, it, that jump, that boost they would get from someone like scrap joining that team would actually make it on the level on par with optic. I think the views would finally start to get eye to eye, honestly. So I think scraps going to phase, although less likely just due to the dynamics of the team, it would actually make a lot more sense for them to invest heavily in him for the future of their franchise. And the secondary question I have when it comes to Scrap going to going to any team, honestly, is we are not entirely sure if he has a, um, you know, it, who's his duo? Would Scrap leave his team solo or would he need to take somebody? You know, Simp and Abizi are always together and now they've made the trio with Cell. Is Scrap a solo player? Would he go by himself just for the Optic offer? Or would he feel like he needs to take, you know, whether it be Insight, whether it be Kleenex? I think he'd go by himself. I think Insight and Kleenex are like a, a duo. Yeah. Scrap and then like yeah, Envoy is just like by himself. Take. You know what I'm saying? Envoy is there by himself. So you think, you like, think Scrap would make the move solo dolo? I think Scrap's got one of those one of those like auras about him that could just go into any team and just by himself and make it better. Mm. Raven but, Scrap, baby. 
<laughs> get, him, get, get, get him on LAG. They need something. Um, <laughs> phase needs phase but, ace. Uh, you're right. AGG breaking point. You're absolutely correct. Good shit. The the um the thing about players and content though, being someone you know that was on a team of people that you know. We had that London team that could have done so much with the content because we were such a like funny team, but we didn't have the backing from the org. You've also got FaZe that would back the org in terms of content wise, but there's also players that don't want to put themselves out there in, in that, you know, in that in that regards. And that's just that's something you can't force someone to do. There's football players, there's basketball players, there's people like that that don't like doing that stuff either. They're just there for business and business only. Um and that's why, you know, when you join Optic, you can't be you know, a boring bastard, uh, you know, <laughs> respectfully. Because um, cause we all know Optic will force you to do content. They will force to get you out of your shell. They will... And it's not that players aren't got the personality. It just needs it bringing out of them. Yeah. And a lot of people in the, a lot of people in the league, a lot of teams in the league don't have the presence that Optic do. Like, I'm not being funny, but if Hitch hit me up for a content shoot, like, I know it's going to be a funny ass shoot like i know i'm gonna have fun whereas if london you know back in the day hit me up for a shoot like that that shit's gonna be ass like that's just gonna be boring it ain't gonna be fun and the only way and the only way it would be fun is it personalities in the same way yeah and and that's my point um some players are just built for content and some players aren't and scrappy built for it simp not built for it but simp's built for the game built for the profession and I think, like, you know, you do get him out of their shell a little bit. I think if you've done a crossover between Optic and FaZe and a content shoot, I feel like you'd see a lot more of Simp and Abizi and So and Draz. Like, they're all funny guys, like, behind the camera and behind the scene. But the content doesn't really push that out from, which is, you know... And, that, and that's respectable, too. Like, they don't like streaming. They don't like doing that. And that's because they just want to sit down and shoot the gun and just do their job. So it, it works both ways. You see the same in other walks as well. Like, recently, um, if people know Valorant... This guy Zelsis, he was on Cloud9 in version one. And he just and okay, he had a reasonable personality, but ever since he's joined Sentinel, basically like the biggest content org in Val, like I don't even want to say he's come out of his shell more, even though I think he has, but like he's a completely different personality. Um and probably the most entertaining personality that is in the Valorant team at the moment. And that's kind of come from nowhere in some respects, because he's been on two teams that didn't really Get that out of him, but it's kind of always been there. And I always feel like with players that join Optic is that they, they gain some sort of further following even after they move on because people see a bit more of them. Even Hook this applies to, you know, like Hook's such an enigma because he was an Optic for a time. People see him in content, you know, they kind of get to see his personality a bit more and then people kind of drag on mm. beyond that. But a couple of things to say on the Scrappy Ultra thing. Firstly, probably more likely than not he stays in Ultra because they're probably going to have good success. But let's not forget last season when Rumor had it, they were going to blow up the team. They run out of money. You know, there was talks that Scrap was being held in contract jail and they were selling the other guys and Scrap wanted out of their team and there was all sorts of tweets about it. Then they changed their mind and said, all right, you know, fair enough, let's run it back, let's get on boy in and actually let's build a good team. And of course that happens. But also can't forget, Scrappy, great friends with a lot of these Optic guys. Him and Dashi, they talk an awful lot. Um, we see it in the streams, we see it in the content. Clearly there's a good relationship there. And, and let's be honest, right? Kenny started out the season very well. The last couple of weeks, he's regressed somewhat on a pure slang perspective, which I think is fine given the fact that Shotzi stepped up. But I mean, are we serious right now? Dashi and Scrappy as a as an AR combo, like, oh my God. Especially what Scrappy is able to do on any role. Like we saw it on the Rio this week. Pulls out the sub, 36 and 26, probably highest damage, highest impact in the lobby for sure on the flex role. It's like, this guy is unreal. We talked about it plenty of times. But if the option's there and Optic don't have the greatest season, firstly, if they don't have the greatest season, it's like, bloody hell, what is going on behind the scenes with Optic that that team hasn't worked? But also, it's going to be the classic Optic thing where they think, well, we don't win with this team. Let's hit the on paper upgrade and see if we win with this new team. Um, I can see it happening. As I said before, though, I don't want it to happen. Like, I don't want Scrappy to go to Optic because they've already got enough good content people. Like, they've already got enough great personalities on that team that carry that team enough as it is all those four guys are ready are you, say, are you saying you want to spread out the content in terms That's of like that? Saying, you, yeah. want, you want you want to keep want it spread. rivalry i want the yeah, scrappy yeah. versus optic i want the scrappy versus face rivalry Wait. if all of the personalities and the good players get concentrated into like two teams then there's 
one good, interesting matchup in the CDL. Whereas right now, at least we have like a handful. Well, uh, Devil's Advocates, so you know what you know what I'm about to do, right? The Devil's Advocate of this, is I actually would want to see him go there because that would lead to a trickle down effect and a snowball effect. Imagine they release Dashi. Imagine. Where does Dashi go? Then? They never would, though. They no, no, never no. would. Though. Okay, you know. okay. If it was for no, no. Dashi, then sure. No, no, I, no but I'll listen, listen, listen. They release Kenny or Dashi. Either one. Imagine the steamroll effect that happens in the rosters when you release someone of that, a player of that caliber, right? And now you have a hole in Toronto. So does Kenny go to Toronto? Or does Dashi go to Toronto? Or do they not want him? And then now it's a whole other, like, roster mania insanity just occurs because Scrap needs to go to Optic. So actually, Devil's to be fair, I'm wise, never going to turn down, like, as much as I think for the for the fan perspective, I think the league is set up better when Scrappy's on Toronto. I'm not going to turn down a crazy Boston Mania. Exactly. Ex like, dude, imagine. Week, imagine he goes to Optic. One of those players is gone. And now it's just all fucking. It's just chaos in the league at that point. Because everyone's roster spot is now up for grabs. And everyone, there's movement. I don't know. I'd like to see it for, for the I culture. Mean, That's what I want to see it for. I was going to say, I was going to throw out like, not like a hot take, but I think if FaZe don't, you know, finish the season strong or actually win this season, I can see one of the, one of the tiny terrors leaving, going somewhere else. I think, no, I think, no. I, I think Selium's on the chopping block at that point. He plays too slow. They need someone who could be scrapped. I, 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 I think, you know. We're jumping ahead though. Wait, know, wait, we're jumping ahead. We're going to the uh, team analysis. But like, but like, but like, that's a, that, that's a triple down effect though. That's everything. Yeah, no. If that happens I'm again, big. that with the if it, bro, there's so if the either of the bro, top I would three love teams to see break up, it's up. crazy. Yeah, yeah. If either <laughs> I, the top three teams blow up, up, it's fucking madness for Roster Mania. And Rab is buying us so many stakes, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Just know that, oh, okay? Yeah. Buying a steak house. <laughs> yeah, might be at this point. <laughs> Listen, put the investment in. Speaking of Dashy, speaking of Dashy, speaking of CDL, speaking of all this, um, Dashy tweeted something that I think is interesting. Uh, we're going to jump to right now. The tweet says, though, and it is kind of radical to think about. In the CDL, only one tournament has been played in nine months. Is that, isn't that, isn't that mind-blowing? Well, is that That's since Champs well. to now? Yes. Yeah, it's like eight and a half months. So like, ah, uh, get the, the CDL gone, bro. Get the CDL <laughs> gone. This thing. Sorry, I'm too good. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that was a thing. Get this thing gone. Like the June, so we've got the ha half of the rest of June after champs. We had July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. That's eight months, and here we are in March. So we're near enough nine months with one tourney, which was obviously Boston in January. So it's actually impressive how shocking this is. Um, I will say that other esports are not necessarily that much better. Valorant is also a shambles, but. Bloody bro, hell. Remember the CDO, remember the CWO days, bro. Yeah, there was a lot of tournaments. We couldn't, we, 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 we couldn't stop go, we couldn't stop going to them. It was like, bro, when do we get a break? <laughs> you're living out of One, a you're living out of a suitcase, basically. I, I've been living out of a suitcase for eight years. Well, no, <laughs> actually when the CDO started, I was, I was <laughs> everything was hung in the closet because we couldn't get <laughs> there was no tournaments. That yeah. is criminal. Yeah. Actually I didn't even realize that was a thing. That is actually criminal i think i think it's not only is it criminal in terms of just nine months only one tournament but you also they extend they took a tournament out of this year and extended online matches so there's more matches this year but less that's the worst thing yeah honestly. you made you made you made it like a longer <laughs> season but more boring and the prize pool is smaller so pretty much any everything that could be I don't know, a negative effect on the league and in terms of the viewer experience, plus the player, the player's experience of prize pools, tourneys, the big tournaments, all that is reduced. I think the CDL is, you know, we could have benefited for them maybe reducing the online schedule two, three, two, three matches. Who cares? Make the, make it four matches, but add a tournament, add a fifth or sixth tournament, make it six tournaments, get rid of online qualifiers. We didn't want to see them make it like one online Sunday qualifier and then attorney we would love that i guarantee you everyone in the league would vote to get rid of online matches and just give us like eight tournaments a season we would be all for it bar none two k's the five k's days like that when you know you had the weekly kind of tournaments that would happen they're just like little online tourneys for a little bit of money but you'd be able to see 
which teams were looking good, what was going to happen when he got to LAN. I think just the worst thing, though, is the split of these online LAN matches because they want to keep the average viewership up or, like, the total viewership based on the amount of retention they get by watching all the bloody matches. So that's what they're going for. We have so many stupid games. We basically are playing pool play over five weeks. What well. used to be pool play and settled on one Friday day and Saturday morning is now played over five weekends, effectively. Um, five? You <laughs> mean set, is, set? You mean like Well, f six. five weekends of qualifiers, right? Yeah. Going into the is major five? now? Yeah, it might be five, it might be Seven six. Seven matches, but five weekends. Oh. Four I just, or five I, weekends. I, I just looked at something, right? We've had one tournament in nine months, yeah? Yeah. The last major, excluding champs, yeah? The, uh, from now to the last major, there's four months. Yeah, I know. What? <laughs> but it might be three months, isn't it? Because we've got no, Miami four. in March, it's and then we've got Toronto in May, and I thought Carolina was June, which is three months. I'm ago. saying like it, it. Oh yeah, no, it is three. Yeah, uh, and it is three. Is it like, yeah, we're trolling here. I don't know. So I don't know it, how Trey's trolling, but I just I feel in my heart he's trolling. What are you trolling on right now? No, 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 no. There, are, like, so we've had one tournament in nine months. Yeah. Yeah. The season's done in four months. Now. From now, the season's done in four months. Oh! Yeah. There we go again, baby. Run it back. Another nine, An another months. nine months, baby. Woo! <laughs> Let's go. go. Love this league, baby. <laughs> Why like, is that, that, is, that, that is crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's shocking, yeah. I will say, we're doing seven online qualifiers at the moment. It also leads to very unbalanced schedules. Like, let's be real, looking at Vegas' schedule. They only play Toronto of the top four teams. And the way the league is currently structured, it is the top four, and you can't even see where my hand is at the moment. <laughs> like, literally the other eight. Like that is how the league is right now. You can see it based on the the win percentages. It's actually insane. Like Subline is a fourth in the league in win in series win percentage. Or actually, I think they're third, but they're fourth in the standings. They are eighty percent series win rate this year. Minnesota Rock are a fifth place in the standings. They are thirty five percent win rate series this year. So that's the gap between top four and the rest. Um, but we're doing seven online qualifiers. I know Ben has made this point. Like, why not just make it 11 at that point? Because 11, you play every other team. So it's like, we did five before. Now we're doing seven. You're not far off bloody doing all of them. So you might as well find some time. To do that, they'd probably have to do simultaneous games or something. But we used to do that all the time back in the day They as might well. be happy nah. so they can get more ad dollars, keep their average viewers yeah, up. Yeah, like, why not? They might be juiced like, to they, do that shit. Basically they, they, they wouldn't need the that. Well, they, they wouldn't need that, right? We're playing two matches on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, exactly. They could do way more. Like, it wouldn't be that much more to have each team play right. every other team. At least then, it they, would be a they, fair they, split. They need to the go major. to... Whoever, whoever's at these meetings needs to go to the table. Like, if we're playing less online matches, we need more majors. If we play more online matches, we can have less majors. Not meet in the middle. Oh, look, it's still shit. It's <laughs> shit and shit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean I'll just... Yeah. The, the, my, my final thought on this is just very simple. It's like, if we could do four online matches, four or five, and then one big tourney... Like, like, you know, one, like 5K or 2K, some, some type of tournament. So we feel that online tournament presence as well. L qualifier matches, online tournament, LAN tournament. That's a good, like, trifecta of a true full com COD competitive landscape, right? Online COD, pool play, like pool play type qualifiers, the tourney, and then now you're in person with that, vo like, that real... On, you know, the land feeling, that completes it. I think that's the way it should be. But yeah, no, trying to extend the, the schedule with online and nine months is just like, you can't expect the eSport to grow when you've only had one tournament in nine months. It's just not possible. The vibe, the, the reason all the clips and the biggest viewership that we that COD gets is when we have a tournament. So if you only have one in nine months, no one's, everyone cares about, you know, Fortnite, Apex, all these other games because they're consistently having these massive tournaments. Warzone has hundred thousand, fifty thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollar tournaments online all the time. We can't even get one. We get one in nine months. That's insane. It's unbelievable. So, COD competitive needs 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 more support and more tournaments to grow. That's just basically what it is and what it comes down to. Um, but I'm the gonna optic versus like hex. Well, just one final thing because I was also gonna mention it, but. I took it out of the runner show a little bit, but there was an update. If you go to like Ben J. Nassim's Twitter, actually, Ace, and just scroll you. down a bit, you'll find it. I got you. Um, he talks about like a brief update to the Optic Hex lawsuit thing with Scump versus Activision. Effectively, well, 
not much has really changed that we understand if you're not a lawyer basically there's this arbitration thing and they're taking certain elements of the claim that are not disclosed into arbitration where they have a sit down externally from the court with an arbitration team and they kind of effectively discuss how they're going to proceed so i'm not really sure there's enough in this to say oh they're going to settle the case or whatever um but all it basically implies that we know for sure is that things are making some degree of progress um and at least on some of the counts there is some case to be made um and maybe that we'll see more of that over time right but i think this is kind of one of the key points in terms of the future of the league is that how this hex gump lawsuit looks over the coming months and I'm sure we're going to have more updates because this is like, I think this is maybe the 4th of March or something this was um, publicized. And I reckon every couple of weeks we'll get like a bit of a bombshell on this. Yeah, March 5th. I, again, I think this is going to tie into the, the if I'm, I'm going to guess, not a lawyer, no legal advice, of course, not given here. But if I'm going to guess. Legal advice. Yeah, yeah no, no, legal no legal advice. advice. Yeah, <laughs> clarify, no legal advice. But if I'm going to guess which claims are going to be talked about here, it's going to be the ones about the splits, the advertisement splits the revenue share, because as we saw with the uh, current negotiations between the owners and Activision, or Microsoft actually, that's the, that's the main point, the revenue share. So if they're currently talking with CDL owners about improving that, I'm gonna assume that with you know Hector and Scump, it's the same kind of conversation. Like, okay, with these owners, we're negotiating this, and retroactively, so you guys can put this away and stop this whole public lawsuit, we'll give you some you know, some revenue share, some better revenue share for the retroactive stuff that's not happened before. And then we can all be peaceful, happy. And in the future, everyone agrees on this certain amount. Everyone's happy. And we can continue on in the CDL. Hector and Scum get the money they want from before. And everyone kind of moves on, you know, and, it, you know, goes into the meadows and keeps running and CDL continues. That's what I'm going to assume that the arbitration is going to be. But a lot of these, the rest of the $600 million claim or whatever it is, I think is just gonna go into the dirt done and dusted and not be a big deal past the initial reaction to it that we had um jumping ahead though uh there is something that is hilarious on the tl that popped up on reddit that actually rab and trey saw that i didn't see but when i saw it it's insane that this even came out uh but we're gonna jump to dante right this is sib speaking here on he goes again man the this big guy, leaker you man can't stop him this honestly like leaksy has not been that bad this season there's been one or two but dante's stepping up to the plate baby sib gotta change his name to whisper because he'd be saying all this shit bro he'd be just 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 muttering all this shit bro all right so we're just gonna play it you guys i'm gonna turn up the volume just listen to it but i, I don't even want to explain it right now just read that read the top and then i'll play it I got a super chat asking me if I've ever been faded in a professional match. Bro, if anybody's getting faded in a professional match, they need to be drunk and Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What? You said... Did you hear it, chat? I'll replay it so you can hear it one more time. Listen to what this man decides to say. They need to be drunk. If anybody's getting faded in a professional match, they need to be drunk and Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What? You said, what? You think somebody's okay? You think it's okay for somebody to, to smoke papaya before a match? I don't, but if it helps him play better, maybe it should. What? Are you crazy? Wait, wait Dan Gosey does it. Did you not know that? Brother, if Dan Gosey's doing that, he's fucking tripping. I mean, but he's godlike. It may help him, though. Yeah, it may help him, bro. He, he probably doesn't smoke like fucking hell. You're telling me he's him off the papaya? You're telling me he's taking it fucking with the baloney? Yeah, yeah. I guess if it helps him, bro, good luck. Shit, maybe the whole team should start getting absolutely <laughs> twisted. Probably, but not me, though. If my team I can getting, help with that. My team is getting faded, bro. I mean, listen, bro. Kudos to you, man. Kudos to you. Couldn't be me, bro. Could it, I, I, I would get shit on August in a pro match. Yeah. Shit on. Accuracy in now, and they'll get the like, bad, bro. Fucking bad. To what we saw in the first round, kind of. So... I'm gonna let you guys take this one to start because I have my very strong opinion about this one. But you guys go ahead, Rab, Trey. What do y'all What do y'all think about uh, Dante being a Fed? I mean, I don't know how much you guys want to say on this, to be honest. Um, but I just think it's funny how Sim just he said it, and then his response wasn't "ah oh, shit," like you know, I shouldn't have said that. His response was like, "Yeah, you didn't know." Like you let me. Let me spill all the tea. That's typical. I'm gonna be. Um, I'm gonna be honest. It's typical that how you reacted. 
I'll say that. Yeah, I was picked out of Bowie Webb, but I also think that, look, for me, I, I had a problem with it. It's like, who cares, right? He's out of there. But I don't know if the team cares. I don't know if the league cares. I feel a bit bad for the ghost. I mean, I, I mean, I doubt, I doubt Dan's just sat there, yeah, walked in there, legs up like this, and just sparked the fat blood. You know what I'm saying? I doubt he's gone in there and done that. Like, let's be real. He does it for practice as well. He just pops up. I mean, him. listen, end of the day, all right. Dante, you're you're fed. All right, let's just even it, even it, right. Let's just say this: even if it has been out there before, it doesn't need to be brought up again. You know what I'm saying? There's been numerous amount of things players have said and done that doesn't need to be brought up again. First of all, if it, you know, exactly if it helps him, all right, let him do it. Whatever. It doesn't affect if his team are pissed off about it. His team are pissed off about it. You know, that's that's another thing. If his team are okay with it, and his team are okay with it, there should be no issues of it. If he starts getting tucked, you know, he might need might might need to stop. But right now, if that's what he does and he's frying and he's one of the, you know, doing what he's doing, it don't matter, man. Listen, you don't have don't. experience with this, Trey? Does it help you or not? What kind know. of fed guy's question is that, Rab? Well, I'm retired now. I'm good. Uh, no, Rab, I've never been high whilst I've played. No. Okay, but let's, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe secondhand high, yeah, for sure. But... <laughs> listen, there we go. There we go. Listen, 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 listen. Ghosty is a grown man, right? Everyone in the league is a grown man. They can make their decisions. If he decides to do this, and and he is high before matches, I can't tell. I wonder if he'd be better not high. The, the question, the, the only question for me that it leaves is would he be better sober would he be you know a better player more confident or, or, or better comms you know whatever it may be because notoriously if you're faded if you're high you know reaction time does go down people tend to get anxious people tend to get quiet so if dan Gosey's this kind of player high what kind of player is he sober that's the question that it leaves for me that i want answered at some point because he might be the best player in the world. He might be he might be better than Scrap if he just puts down the Maybe Papania. he's worse. He could <laughs> Bro, be better. He's worse. Right both ways like this. No, he could be. I mean, he could. And there's a few. There's a few fucking players in the league that do need it. Maybe honestly, no, no, mo a motherfuckers can't hold a pre-aim. <laughs> yeah, for the Afro that you just yeah, like but, this, this guy Dan Ghosty. Plug, this guy Dan Ghosty's walking around the map anxious. Every, everyone's gonna about to pop up around every corner. He's like, he's gonna come. He's gonna pop up. He's gonna pop. He's gonna. He, he just and that's why every he's corner, so bro. good. He might yeah, be. Yeah, exactly, man. His performance enhancing. I don't know. I don't know. Like, if I said last week or whatever it was, Afro needs to get off the caffeine and get on the bottle of water. I think maybe he needs something stronger based on this week. Jesus. Listen, overall, the, but the, I'm going to say the Dante part of this is very odd. You know, as a player in the league, not only is it weird to just be dishing out, secret or not, just dishing out intel like that, so willy nilly on the, I think it's not the flank, but basically the flank, right? Duma stream, like just letting that out is insane. Um, you know, there's a kind of a trust between players and between teams and the league and kind of this camaraderie. So for you to go against that and just start spewing, um, you kind of open yourself up to a lot of bullets, a lot of targets on your back that, uh, you know, I'm sure other players know some stuff about you. So. You don't want to, again, this leads to like a, a slippery slope of you say this about this guy, all of a sudden you start getting exposed, all of a sudden, it's like GA breaks, man. It's like a GA break. One guy snakes, now the other guy's snaking, now the whole league's snaking, now it's just fucking blow it up. It's just all bad. But you want to know what I, you want to know what I like want to get into people's heads is that a lot of people know this in the scene. Like a lot of these things that like gets leaked. The players and Zuma, Ben J Nassim, all Ace, Rab, me, we all know this. We just don't go out and blurt it out. The fuck? I'm not on about I'm not on about the that. I'm, I'm just saying in general, like the intel that you guys think is crazy. Like imagine imagine Tommy leaked everything he knew. Oh my yeah, he God. just has to sit there and he, he just has to sit there and act he just has to sit there and act like <laughs> Wait, Dan does that? No, no, no. what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like that guy in the. Uh, my the my point is, no, my no. point is, we know a lot of things, but as a player, like you know, if if it's leak worthy, like where it's like you know, you know, like you know, good information for the scene, it's not terrible. But as a player, don't go out out in other players like that. It's you know, it's like. 
it creates a bad look. Plus, like you said, it's like there's gonna be certain things that they don't tell. There's gonna be certain things that don't tell Dante, and you know, there's gonna be like you know, Tommy could have sat there and be like, yeah, I knew that. Like, I got told that ages ago. But it's, you know, he's got to play it off like you don't know. Just you know, as a player, you got to respect other competitors too. Yeah, I just think like if there's no harm from it, then that's fine. But in the in this case, I'm like, well. Well, in other sports, I mean, what was what was her name? Um, something Richardson. She's a American sprinter. Oh, uh, she got like the score. Shaniqua Richardson. Yeah, yeah. She's like the record. She's like the record woman sprinter right now. Shakira. Shakira. Uh, There's not a posture in her name. I know I what you're know. talking about. Yeah, yeah. I forget that. People in the chat will know. Yeah, she, something like that. Anyway, Shakari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Shakari. Right, yeah. yeah, I, I was yeah. right. She, she got Nike suspended athlete. for. Yeah, I said Shakira, and I was like, that's not it. But I knew it was kind of close. To Shakira. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Shakari Richardson, I think is her name. That's her name, yeah. Uh, thanks for the chat for knowing. And she got suspended or something because she had weed in her system or whatever the case is, right? And I'm like, okay, you're telling me that's performance enhancing. But that's the way the rules work in these other leagues. That like any sort of drug in your system, you get banned for. Uh, I don't think it works like that in this league. But, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, for, like, from, it, from my understanding, when you get tested at events, they don't test you for cannabis. Like, you're good. Like, like even if it shows up like on the test, I think you're good. I mean, from what be, I from from what I know. To be fair as well, um, I'm gonna yeah du double d double down agreeing with Trey that cannabis is not a problematic thing in the CDL, but it's also legalized in a lot of states now. So it kind of falls under if Adderall, for example, because your prescription is fine, how can you justify banning or finding somebody for having weed in their system? when it's legal in certain states. All you have to be is above a certain age. So it kind of is a two-way street. Um, I'm not sure how old Ghost he is, so it could burn him in another sense. Don't know his age, just saying. But uh, yeah, no, they can't, they can't ban you for something that's legally, you know, in California where he lives, it's legal. So, well, so he's good in Boston. He's good in Toronto. He's good in California. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he ain't, he, 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 he ain't good. At, is he good in Carolina? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, think I don't know. So bro, bro, uh, sure I don't even know, know if Carolina's a real I, place. Okay, I, I, Carolina doesn't even exist on my. I've never been I, there. I'd be, I, I, I'd be the biggest snitch, bro. I'd be like, nah, it's not legal. Yeah, get him gone. By the way, he's doing so <laughs> illegal. Yeah, if, he, if he's no, good mates with Muddy B, then you know. I, I think, <laughs> I, I think to end it as well. Like, if you're getting, you know. Clapped by someone that is supposedly high, like you might need another Red Bull or something, bro. Like you might need another Red Bull. You know, like uh... if I if I lost to four people that were baked out their mind, I'd retire on the spot. I'm dead serious. I just I just don't like this one. I don't like this one notion of it though. Competitively, it's like if there is a place, yeah, like you said, if there is a uh, an event that happens somewhere where, where let's say marijuana is not legal or, or he has no access to it, whatever it may be. Um, what happens then? Right, you've played your whole. You've played a long time. Let's say doing this habit before match. It's like a. It's like a. You know, some players take a shit before matches. Some players will. You know, have a certain thing they eat in the morning. Right before. Uh, before tourneys, he does this apparently. He sparks up. <laughs> yeah, he he sparks up. But what if you can't do that? Then what happens to your match? Do you start playing badly? Are you irritable? Do you not play the same way? I think it leaves a lot of variables. Plus, over time, let's say his career spans three years, four years. Um, we can all, I mean, not we, but like generally people can agree that how alcohol or weed or whatever it may be hits you at 18 years old versus 25 years old is going to be a different feeling and a different effect. So it's just, I think there's a lot of variables that exist with this. How much is he supposed to smoke? Oh, is it half a blunt or a full blunt? What's the dose? It might be a gateway, bro. It might be a gateway. I'm just saying. It's just, you never know. He might open his third eye with a King Kong finger. Let me tell you, that thing is huge. <laughs> wow. It's just. It's should just have just, seen me. Should have seen me smoking them in LA. Holy fuck! I was asleep how, on the beach. That might be how Wake had that crazy awareness. I just. It was all online. Nobody would know. I just don't get it. I just, to me, it's just an odd thing of like such a variable of like. Okay, let's figure out the perfect dosage and time. And you just just play COD. Sit down, play some COD, take some caffeine to play COD. I think it's a little weird. I think Sib leaking this is weird. And I think I'm worried now that Sib is going to ostracize himself from the rest of the league. Um, and now, yeah, people are going to keep him out of certain conversations, not want him to be, you know, it just it, it makes things weird once you start leaking stuff with people. So that's what I hope doesn't happen in this case. But speaking of, speaking of just, you know, uh, 
Speaking of things I want to talk about, let's just make it very simple. Things I want to talk about. Let's jump to what this guy Aches is saying. Okay? This argument has been... How do we want to do this, Aches? Do we want to do the matches and then get into this stuff? Because I kind of think, I, you know... I think everyone in the chat really wants... I think the chat wants us to talk about this. I think this is like a big... I'm happy, to, I'm happy, to, I'm, I'm happy to talk about the important, like, outer game stuff and then hit, hit, the, hit the nail on the head with, a, with a, some CDL matches. Yeah, we, I think mm -hmm. this part, we can, we, can, we can hit this. We're only, we're only 40, 45 minutes into the show. We got time, bro. We're just, we, we haven't hit three hours yet. We're solid, baby. We got time. <laughs> let's get this. All right. Let's get to this conversation. The, what is a superstar? I, I think I think we'll start with Pat, with Pat's original tweet, and then we'll go from there and build on to his uh, what he says next. So let's go. Let me find that tweet. Give me one second. Ah, here it is. All right. We have a tweet from Patty P. Ake saying people really think twenty percent of the league are superstars. Laughing emoji. Rab Trey. Thoughts? Agree? Disagree? Or are you on Pat's side or are you against Pat's side? I agree with Pat on this. As in, there are superstars is, should be an exclusive category. As it would be in other leagues. A star is already enough of a compliment. A superstar should be a very exclusive list. But the criteria upon which that list is determined... I do not agree with Aix's assessment on. Okay. Trey? Now, I mean, he is right. It's clear, like, you know, if everyone was a superstar, you know, every game be going 3-2, fucking nail-biting shit. Like, no, people are getting smoked. <laughs> like, there, it's probably even less than 20%, if you want me to be honest with you. Radical? I don't think so. I think we've had the same names at the top for the last four years or so maybe with one coming in sneaking in left right and center but there's like good players on bad teams that people deem a superstar but you know they're just good on a bad team in my opinion they're they're very good players picking up kills that their teammates can't get if you know what i'm saying yeah does that make you a superstar it makes you very fucking good i couldn't tell you the exact meaning of a superstar in cod terms but you know, simp superstar. <laughs> you know, like people like that that you can look at. That you know, you you look at them and you think, "Fuck me, he's gonna win us the game." <laughs> That's a superstar to me. Um, I do believe it is below twenty percent. Was I a superstar? Fuck no, was I a superstar? I was a superstar for like a month <laughs> in, a, in, a, in an eight-year career. It's you know to do it consistently as well. I I. <sighs> The whole argument, because this argument's about Shotty being a superstar. And there's been a whole lot of controversy about Shotty not being a superstar because of how inconsistent he is. But when Shotzi's on form, that's when he's like... But that's the point is, is when Shotzi's on form, he is unbelievable. I even said it to a... Oh, who did I say it to? I can't remember, but I literally said like when Shotzi's like... When Shotzi, it might be new Ace or Rab. But when Shotzi's on point, he is by far one of the hardest kills to get in the league. And I'm talking gunfight, movement, everything in everything like connected, combined. He is one of the hardest kills in the game. Now, if he does it consistently, consistently, yeah, for sure. But we need to see it consistently because everyone's had this thing that oh, he doesn't do it against the top four teams. Well, he's just done it against the best team in the game or one of the best teams in the game. Can you do it again? You'd like to hope so. Is he going to do it against FaZe? You'd like to hope so. So, yeah. I know I, I I I agree with Aches in, in some of the stuff he says, but he also is a bit faded in a lot of things he says too. Uh, in regards Before we to go, Ace, I just wanted to quickly address the 20% of the league thing because I was thinking about this today. 20% of 48 players is far fewer players than 20% of the NBA or even let's say 20% of world footballers, right? Like, 20% of world footballers are not superstars. I mean, how many superstars are there in world football? I mean, you, you, might, you might look at like top 10 on Ballon d'Or or something like that. Like, and as a percentage of world players, that's, I mean, maybe a lot, a lot of the top teams might have one or two superstars if you're talking about football, at least in my opinion. Um, and they've got plenty of players in their squad, right? 
So maybe on that level, it becomes more exclusive. So I guess the question is, well, let's say in, let's say in world soccer, wherever there's like 20 superstar players, maybe. I don't know. I'm just making things up. Loads of people play football. In CODs, the population of players is smaller than in those other sports. So despite the fact that a league is smaller, I don't think this percentage argument is actually too bad, is kind of the point I'm getting across. Yeah. Um, compared to other leagues. Uh, okay. So I have two parts of this. One where, the, one, one where the glasses come out and one where they don't come out. Okay. Part one, no glasses. 20% of the league are superstars. I, yeah, I'm going to agree with Pat. I'm going to agree with Rab that that is too much for our few between. A superstar is someone that's unbelievable in all categories of endeavor in a certain act, whether it's basketball, video games, whatever it may be, correct? In this league, you can say that a lot of players are very good, but they may not have the smarts, may not have the best gun skill, may not have the best leadership, may not, there's, there's a hole in their game. There's not, you have to consider the LeBrons, right? LeBron is the superstar because there's no flaw in his game. He's smart, he can pass, he can shoot, he can this. Messi, Ronaldo, these guys, superstars because of their auras, but also because there's no real flaws in the positions they play and how they play their game. Sure, one may be a little better than the other in certain aspects, but to say that, oh, in this aspect, they're just, they're bad, is not real. It's not realistic. So when we talk about COD, um, there are quite a few stars going to Trey's argument. One, you know, you could say Attach is, is a star. I would agree with that. But could he be a superstar? It's tough to say because who's on his team? It's tough to say if he's a superstar. Real superstars are created when they have stars in their presence yet still shine. That's what makes an optic or a phase team like Celium dropping 1.2s while he has Simp and Abizi on his team. That's insanity. You have Pred dropping 1.2s or you have Shotzi right now dropping 1.7s with the, the likes that are on his team. It's unbelievable. Those, that's how you could distinguish a superstar. Okay. Now, the other half of this argument. The other half of this argument. Uh, Here they come. The glasses are going on or not? <laughs> Patty P, sir, you need to shut your damn mouth for the thousand time. This man, Shotzi, in stage two was an absolute superstar. Kill records broken. Records are for the best. If he's breaking the record, what does that make him? A rook? It's a superstar. The team hasn't lost yet in Major 2. What does that make him? A dud? It's a superstar. Pat, at this point, your hating is just weird. Shotzi is playing some of the best Call of Duty we've seen in forever. He's unbelievable. Dropping 1.7s, 1.5s, winning maps solo dolo. Rest of his team negative. To call him not a superstar in this stage is, is blasphemous. Pat, whoever dropped you on your head as a baby needs to pick you back up, rock your little back, make you burp a little bit, and make you see the truth. Shotzi's unbelievable, and I will not have this kind of caca bullshit that you're spewing continue. 3.2 in control, another record. That's three records. That's three records. All in one major. If LeBron, bro, it, glasses are off now, realistically. If any player is breaking three kill records or just KD records in one split, one major, one event, they're having an unbelievable event or major or split. Somebody, this is, I think this is the center of the argument though, right? This is where I can devil's advocate back to you guys, back to the chat as well. And to Pat, maybe he responds. I don't know. This is the devil's advocate though. Does being a star in one stage make you a superstar? That's the, that's the X factor question to this argument. Is he a superstar right now or a superstar in general? That's, the, that's where everyone, I think, kind of has an argument. Because Shotzi's inconsistency, you know, building up from the beginning of the game to now, is really what the question, where the, the meat and potatoes of this question lie. To me, he's a superstar because it, the beginning of the game is not fair to assess whether someone's a star or how good they are just yet. They're still learning the game with the, with the new team. 
at this point, he's proving why he's one of the best players in the game. Once they've learned, once they've got their S&D on point, once they've gone through the tri trials and tribulations of not winning a tournament and, and losing some, some online matches, they've beat the best teams. They've proven themselves on different maps. Their S&D looked godlike in their last series. In my definition, at this time, he's a superstar. In general, he's a superstar. Superstars can have bad stretches too. LeBron's had bad stretches. I'm sure Messi and Ronaldo have had bad stretches. Michael Jordan didn't win the first, what, six or seven years of his career. You can have bad stretches, but still be a superstar. And that's the center of the argument. I'll, I'll cook. I'll, I'll, I'll counter argument, but I don't disagree with you in the counter argument. It's just my point. I think he's a superstar in form right now. He's a, he, his form right now is superstar form. Um, when, when we talk about superstars, we look at, you know, the people that are consistently at the top 24 seven and he isn't at the top 24 seven. He's in, he's in superstar form right now. Now, would I deem Fred a superstar on Vanguard? No, because he wasn't at the top. He was just frying in a bad team. Now he's in, now he's in optic who is a very good team. He is superstar. Yes, because he's doing it in a good team. Now, Shotzi, Seattle was a bad team. I think Seattle. I don't. I don't think they're a top team. I'm not saying they're they a bad were, team. They, they, were were in the top, they were in the top four the entire year. What? They won an event. They're all over the place. Oh, Aix is coming out with the Lamar cheese. I mean, they, bro, it's not even Lamar cheese. It's just, it's just unbelievable to say that they weren't a top team in that game. That's just that's just crazy to say. I'm just saying. And that's my opinion. Ah, it's, it's a cheese opinion, bro. I don't want to say mozzarella. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. <laughs> But you're gonna force they me to say it. They, 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 they weren't consistently good, is what I'm saying to you. Okay. But uh, now let me talk about you know, let me talk about Pred. You know, I'm I'm speaking like on the likes of like Simple and BZ and stuff like that. They're always at the top. We always look at them coming second place at events, even first, whatever, like that. Yeah, see, I had a good year, but what I'm saying is Pred is now doing it in a very good team. It, it's not like he got. It, it, it's it, he's putting up. So even Major One Ace, his numbers were insane. Oh, uh, th uh, this year, yes, oh, I insane. Agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Insane, and he's doing it like he's pretty much doing it every single series. And now Shotzi's stepping up too. Now he's you know Shotzi's looking like that guy. I think the inconsistencies is where it lies with Shotzi. Do I think he's a superstar? Yeah, I think Shotzi's a superstar. Yeah, for sure. I just think he's in very good, like, I think Aix's argument, I, I don't know what he's got against Shotzi. He's just what, um, he, has, what he has against Optic, to be fair. To be fair. I, 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 you know, in my opinion, like, he's in superstar form, and if he keeps it up, like, good. I, if he plays the way he is at this major... Like, everyone's calling him an onliner. You know, a lot of people in the chat call him onliner. I mean, let's not make it out like it is Shotzi. He's very, very good. But if he doesn't do it at land, then, you know, then we're back to square one. But if he does this at land, you can name Optic Gaming your champions for Major 2. Uh, That's facts. So I want to listen to Aix names his only superstars in CDL and see if we <laughs> agree or disagree or we have our own picks, all right? Well, so this is a bit of a Freudian slip, so this wasn't actually... But yeah, you can sh share the clip. All right, got you. Here we go. Not fit that criteria. Okay, then I'm by sorry, this, then, he doesn't. Okay, then, then, but you know I, who what? does? Pred, Shotzi, Simp, Selium. Those guys fit that that criteria. Not fit. Oh, what the fuck? He said Shotzi. He meant to say Scrappy. He meant to say like. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So Pred, Scrap, Sell, and and like. Uh, Pred, Scrap, Scrap Sell, and Simp. simp? Is that who he said? Is this four? Yeah, that's that's who he. I think he maybe added. He was almost gonna add like Hydra or something as well. Um, but maybe I don't think he did that in the end. Okay, well, because yeah, someone because because someone in tweeted him a list as well, didn't they? So I mean, you can bring that up on. I actually too. did link that in the. Uh, there was yeah, a, if you, the there's yeah. a there's a list that got someone it, got tweeted aches. I know, I got it. There's a list that someone tweeted aches, and he said, "Is this okay? Like, is this good?" And he said, "He's got." Kind of. Yeah, he replied uh, to the to the list saying, "I might throw a Tatch and Kleenex in Star. Otherwise, I agree." Oh yeah, here it is, right here. Um, what the hell? <laughs> I would also give my opinion on this in a second because I have a, I have a different definition. Of oh, this. here we go. Okay, Call me so to make it for you, Trey. I, I got it right here. So he I, says I, I, I have it up. They have so in this list that he, to agree with him, I guess he has 
Wait, this is so stupid. He has scrap, sell, uh, uh, Kleenex, simp, pred, and then says, I might throw attach and Kleenex in star. Otherwise, I agree. Okay, yeah. saying drop Kleenex down drop one Kleenex and, and, attach and up pull one. attach up. So he, he would actually have just scrap, sell, simp, and pred. That's all he would have. Agree or disagree? Uh, there's okay. only one person. That, there's one person I'm taking out of star and putting him in superstar. I think I know. And who. if you want to, and if, if you want to try and guess it, you can. Hydra. Abizi. Oh, okay. How would you? How can you not put Abizi in superstar? To be honest with you. Mm. I think you can make that argument for a lot of players. This is why my perception on this is different. I think star is already like a lot of gas. To be a star, that's that's a pretty big deal on a team. And I think there can be maybe 15 stars in a 48 team league. There can only be four or five superstars as far as I'm concerned. The key differentiating factor to me, sure, you've got to be consistently in the MVP conversation. And that's not just stats. And I think that's what X does overlook about the Shotzi thing is that it's not just about the numbers. This guy's impact on the map when he's playing well is obscene. And that has to be considered when you're discussing these superstar metrics in terms of how consistently is someone in the MVP category. But for me, it comes down more so to what happens outside of the game. In my opinion, a superstar is defined in large part by how important they are for the scene outside of the game. Are they a face of their team? Are they a face of the league? That matters in superstar discussions, in my opinion. In all sorts of sports, this is true. So to me... The discussion here on Optic it is Dashi, Pred, and Shotzi all superstars. Is Cell, Abizi, and Sim all superstars? That seems outrageous to me to say that like everyone's a bloody superstar on their teams. To me, you choose the player of those teams, maybe two players in some instances, that are the biggest names, the biggest face. And Shotzi absolutely is by that metric. This guy is huge outside of the lead. My barber knows who Shotzi is because he sees his TikToks and stuff. Like, he is, in some sense, the new scump. So, Shotzi's in the MVP conversation consistently, and he has a massive brand and face in the scene, and is, in some sense, the face of it. To me, that nailed on Superstar. I look at a player like Abizi, I don't think that applies to Abizi. I don't think that applies to Hydra. I don't think that applies to Cell. Simp might be good enough, and somewhat well-known enough, that he takes the cake anyway. I think, I think it's just gameplay-wise. I think that's gameplay wise. Strictly this gameplay. What you're saying is 100% right too. That, you know, you have to be good and, you know, be that known. Like, imagine if, you know, imagine if like Ronaldo and Messi didn't like do what they've done and actually like, you know, assert themselves as like media dominances. I mean, Messi, for example, he let his gameplay do the talking. Same as Ronaldo, but Ronaldo like elevated a bit much, uh, a lot more. Same as LeBron, he's the face of that. I mean, Messi and Ronaldo were in a like when you deem superstars in football, they were the only two superstars. You didn't put anyone else in a category with them. There's and... a go, go on, go on. I was just saying. No, I was just. I, I agree with I agree with Rab, but there's also another side to it as well. There's different kinds of superstars, right? There's face of the league in terms of media dominance, but there's also just players who are undoubtedly good. You can talk about in the NBA again. I know I hate that. I, you guys are both EU lads, so the NBA examples don't like, pretty much go over your heads unless it's LeBron. But if I say Jason Tatum, right? Jason Tatum is absolutely a superstar, but he's okay. not in the front of the league. He's not uh, in advertisements. Giannis is a good example as well, but now he's starting to become bigger in media and stuff like that. Um, so there are two kinds of superstars. There's a skill superstar and there's a face of the league superstar. Two versions. So if I'm going to base it on that, my superstars would be Scrap, Simp, Shotzi, Pred. That's it. And the reasoning is because they fit all criteria of everything I've said and Rab has said when it comes to skill, in-game, personality out of game, recognizability, plus intelligence in game. You add all four of those factors into that little squad I just created, that's the top 10%. And if you go, you know, A minus to A plus, right? That's that's the best. 20% is B minus to A plus. Those B players are not superstars. It just doesn't make sense. So you can only have in a league of 48, four or max five to be your top players, your superstars. Having five here is not acceptable. You need four. I think I created the best four possible. I mean, let, let's just talk about Skump, for example, right? Yep. So every year that Skump was a player, 
he's got to be in the superstar category just by the nature of who Scump was. Yeah, I agree. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. Even though Scump, he was, for much of his career, was obviously MVP candidate all the time. But there were seasons like World War II and, you know, let's say Cold War, where, sure, top 10 player, probably, but not top five. But in terms of superstar status, I mean, come on, let's be real here. Like, Scump was always in that category. You can even make the same argument to some extent about Nate. Back, I know PD Gamer mentioned this in the chat earlier. I thought it was interesting. Like, he was saying that Nate shot in his heyday, sure, he was on Optic, the biggest team. He wasn't the best player on Optic. He was a solid role player. But, I mean, he was still a star. At the very I mean, minimum, a, Nate He's was the a one star. that got people into comp. Yeah, so it's like, I think maybe it's a bit, you know, let's say looking back at Black Ops 2 or Ghosts, was Nade a superstar, top four in the entire league? Maybe that's a bit much. But, you know what I mean? I, that clearly has some degree of consideration in when you're discussing which players are like the creme de la creme, right? And which players people think of when they think about COD. Yes, that, that, that's the big distinction of like a star to a superstar. What is super about this star? It's they think about them outside of COD, outside of just our niche. Who, which one of these players can make an impact in media generally? That's why I have Pred up there. Realistically, if Pred wasn't so loved by people, just if you tell me based simply on gameplay, would I have Pred at Superstar or Star? Right now, I'd have him at Star. And I know that might be a radical take to some people. Just on gameplay, I'd have him at Star, not Superstar right now. Um, but because of AG's personality, his stream, his ability to captivate on camera, his humor, um, and his ability to, to just, he has a whole region behind him. When he goes back home to Australia, we were in, me and, me and AG were in Miami, and he was getting recognized in Miami just walking the streets. So, you know, it's a different level of just being a star, a skilled player, to being able to captivate people outside of just the game. And that's where I hit superstar. Cell is a star, but Cell is not captivating people outside of, of the game and content in, in that manner. He's one of the best players in the game, so he could be a skilled superstar, but people know Simp outside of just COD. So, was I don't Krim, know. Was Krim a superstar to you guys? Yes. Yeah, let me address that quickly, right? Because there, there was some discussion in the chat, and I think good, good response to my take on where Clay currently sits mm. or where Krim sits, right? Because I'm not going to say Clay's a superstar. Like, I They're would legends. still say, yeah, exactly. I think it's a little bit of a distinction to be made, especially because I made the Nade comparison back in the day. But Nade to COD then was in a completely different ballpark in terms of importance of him as a personality than Krim or Clay are today in some sense. Obviously, they've achieved an awful lot. Absolute legends, veterans of the scene, done so much. But in terms of the content side and what Nate was doing for the scene at the time, that was different to Krim having already won basically everything at that point. Now, players on that level that have won everything that they've won, to me, they're still star level players in some sense. But I think my, my analysis is to be a superstar, you've got to have the MVP status and you've got to have the notoriety or the reputation. Yeah, so Nameless is going wild in the chat right now because Hydra's not a superstar. If Hydra started up the bloody stream and was the face of the league, then sure, he gets into that category. Is Hydra, in my opinion, top two most skilled players in the league? Yes. But is he... I don't know. It's really tough. But there's so many players that are star lists. players. There's two lists. Is it gameplay superstar or... Oh, yeah. You know... This also isn't our list, Nameless, by the way. This is like a yeah, list. Yeah, no, this players. isn't our list. It's a list I'm thinking. But... No, no. And, and, and I have a question for you, right? And I have a question for you directly and the chat and you guys, too. A question. I, I said this a couple weeks ago as well, but I'm going to Pose it one more time for the sake of argument. If you're building a team, you have to build it around one player. Are you picking Hydra, Pred, or Simp? Marry one, kill one, kick one. Who are you picking? I know, I know for a fact your answer is not Hydra at Mary. Because you're picking Simp to Mary. Of course, I, I think all three of us can agree Simp is our Mary choice of that list. Then I'm going. Bro, right. listen, and then you I'm are not picking Hydra. You are not picking Hydra to build your team around. You're building. You're basing it around Sim, bro. We faded here. You gotta pick Sim, bro. You gotta pick Sim, bro. If you don't pick, no, he he said Hydra. He did. 
Yeah. I, I like. I think. Yeah, put down incredible. the papanya, brother. Put down the papanya. Yo, 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 did it, yo, did go, yo, is Ghosty send him some shit, bro? Because, <laughs> <laughs> bro, you, uh -huh. you need to put that shit down. You're out of your mind, brother. You're out of bro, your mind. you are not. Listen, let's not discredit Hydra here. By the way, one of the greatest players in the game right now it has been for a while. Absolutely. Overtake. Overtakes me on the goddamn motherfucking best European player of all time, or it's, you know, in a conversation. Trey, you go, but unlucky, Trey. It's all good, <laughs> man. Yeah, who keeps? Yeah, no. Listen, I, I know where I stand in this argument. All right, longevity wise, I'm I'm a legend. All right, am I? A, was I a superstar? No, I was a superstar for like a month, and then I was a. I'd probably say I was a star for some some years, but you know, over the course, probably average is what people no, would say no, about you me. opened up you opened up the door for players that's also in my opinion you acquire a, a star a superstar in order to open the door up for other players to come here so i'll give you that like i said i would take i would take legend hydra has by far exceeded my ceiling but simp has blown everyone out of the water this guy came in in his first year and dominated yep and has been dominating since <laughs> like yeah yeah, if you're not building, around, if you're not not building around him, it's unbelievable. Side note, one more th thing on this list I really hate, I super hate, is that Awakening is in Barely Pro. This is recency bias, stupid shit. Barely Pro. It's, no, actually, no, it, it, such it's a actually disrespectful. disrespectful. Category, he was a walking 1.2, 1.1 for, what, two years, three years now? And he's all of a sudden barely pro because of recency bias? But Geo, goddamn Geo got a lead two weeks ago and he's an average? Come on, man. This list, this list is a bit cheese already. Like once you go past star, even I think people's perception is very recency bias based. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's, I think it, to clarify my take a little bit more. Go ahead, go ahead. There's two ways to make money in this world. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> by scale or by magnitude. You either sell shit that's worth a lot of money, good profit margins, or you sell a load of small shit that you can make money off on a magnitude level. That's option one or option two. You want to be a millionaire, you do one of those two things. You want to be a billionaire, you do both. That's what Apple do. Shit ton of sales and massive profit margins. My opinion is you have a star player. A star player comes from two categories. Either they're consistently in the MVP conversation or they have massive influence to some degree. This is why Clay still falls into that category. To be a superstar, you need both of those things. And that, I think, is my, the way that I look at it. But I think there's a lot of nuance to the definitions around this. My take is probably quite hot compared to some people because they just want to see top 15 players, put them in order, that's your stars, top of the superstars. But it's like, you can look at the list of players and say Kleenex is a superstar. Not in my opinion, I think he's a star. Hydra, is he a superstar? You know, then you look at Skies, you look at Dashi, you look at Predge, you look at Kenny. It's like, well, can't all be bloody superstars, guys. I, I agree with Aix on that. The, cl the closest- I, I, I just want to- Go ahead. I was just I just want to say something about this list. This list is so top heavy recency bias, it's actually crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of recency bias on this list. I will agree on that too. Um, but I want to say also too, because like, like, go ahead, go, go ahead. I, I was just going to say like, like the recency bias on this list is crazy. Like we make out like Austin wasn't like, you know, a top AR last game, you know, dropping like, you know, the best S and D player in the game on phase last game, last game. It's not like he just dropped off the face of the eye. If he's just on a bad team, is he average? No, Austin's not average. Yeah, exactly. He's just average. At, he's average at the game. Was Wake average last game? No, listen, Ake has a bad Ake, uh, Wake has a bad thing around him that he's a kill whore and everything like that, but he was still dropping serious numbers. Right. You know, it's a very recency biased list. I'm yeah. not trying to add anything. I'm not trying to throw anyone up there or whatever like that, but like, you know, like we had Ghosty last year. Everyone, you know, deemed, you know, he was, you know, deserved to stay on Optic or whatever like that. And didn't happen because obviously the like upgrade or whatever like that but is ghosty average after last year no the also the, the, <laughs> but, yeah. the biggest cheese on this list is that the top four teams are are the first two brackets look at it the top yeah. four teams are literally yeah. the top two so what they're essentially saying is there's not a singular player outside of the top four teams that deserves to be a star that's stupid first off Secondly, because if i'm looking at this sorry to cut you off i'm looking at this like we got gwyn and lins yeah, Gwyn's on a, you know, we won't, we, we won't say about Gwyn, but this guy, we won't say about his team, but this guy is throwing up some serious numbers yeah, for be being on a bad team, you for know, sure. and he's actually carrying them to some wins against good, you know, uh, 
decent teams. I won't get. I won't say they're beating like the top four teams, but there's players on this list that deserve to be at least on the bottom of star with what they're working with. Yeah, I think a lot. I think this whoever made this list was just like thought about the first two brackets and the second one. There was like, ah, like, there, fuck it. Whoever is. Oh, this guy. This guy's getting shit on this year. We'll whack him, yeah, we'll whack whatever this. There, yeah, man. oh, they're fifth, they're sixth, they're seventh, they're eighth. Let's just put them all down here, basically. The mm. only movement, the only person that I would say that's in star right now that could move up to superstar. And I say this, maybe hot take, maybe not. I have no idea. Snoopy? He's a, he's, he should be in Barely Pro because he is Barely Pro. Listen, it should be Dante because Dante is, has the, the aura around him to be a superstar. He is someone that at a game, if he had the right content team around him, could be insane. Um, and skill-wise, if anyone disagrees that Dante is ridiculously skilled at this game mechanically, you're out of your mind. Um, but... Should he keep leaking shit? No, he shouldn't. And then he could maybe be in the superstar category <laughs> once he stops <laughs> leaking shit right, continually. Um, but yo, he fried. Yo, he he fried. Nameless, um, nameless said it was a good point. Like, if you join Optic, you all of a sudden like automatically a superstar. Um, I disagree. I think probably one additional caveat I need to make to my opinion on how you characterize this from like a clout perspective is that. I think to some degree it depends on who your teammates are. Like, if you're MVP caliber and have big reputation of recognizability outside of the game, and you're like the most in those categories on your team, then yeah. Because I think you know that's one thing that I haven't quite figured out my own opinion on is that like I don't think Shotzi, Dashi, and Pred can all be superstars on my metric, but kind of by my analysis they kind of should be. But I think. There needs to be some caveat where it's like if you're kind of top one or top two on your team, then you get it. So I think I don't have. Um, was Krim a superstar by your metric? Krim was a superstar in his when he was at the peak. My opinion is that before he retired, he was a star. We have we have a we have a ex, we have an ex tweet in reply to breaking point. Uh, we're gonna go straight to the TL really quick and peep this very fast, hey, guys. Which tweet was it? The it was the uh, Ace defense yeah, Shotzi yeah, and calls yeah. out Egg. Shotzi's place with the best card we've ever Here seen. We go, and Patty P responds. Who the fuck is that guy? Ah, uh, okay. All right, Pat. All right, Pat. Pat, note, bro. Just jump it. Just jumping on board of what Nameless is saying. There's just there's just <laughs> two lists. It's either gameplay. It's either gameplay related or just everything related. I think this. Ah, uh, no. Being cooked there. I, I, I think it kind. I, I think it kind of. No, listen. It's, it's very. It's very I, the, Rab broke it down one way. I broke it down another way. It's very simple. It's. Two kinds of superstars. You're the skilled superstar. I also do think you're faded the for the sip shot, though. Why? Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow it down, baby. How am I faded for that take? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Skill level, skill level, yeah. But other than that, you don't, I don't know about. You don't think Dante? You don't think Dante's a personality that could that's uh, bigger than the game? I mean, maybe if he joins Optic, we'll see. But like, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Nameless, nameless should invite me to the call. <laughs> nameless actually wants to join and give his take. I'm actually down for that. We, I'm should, down. Should we bring him in? We can yeah, bring I'm him down. In. Yeah, yeah. Add him, to the chat. Add him to the chat. I got friends who are on Discord, what? though. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find him. Yeah, I think Tr Trey should definitely be friends with him. Okay, Trey's going to get that out. The other thing I wanted to say while we figure this out is, um, like, let's say... I mean, okay, I think Shotzi qualifies regardless. Can I add one thing? So, so, sorry, just because mm -hmm. someone in chat said something. Siv isn't there yet. I agree he's not there yet. I said biggest potential to move from star to superstar. That's what I, that was my point. Who has the highest chance to break out of just being a star? They have the skill level. They just need the notoriety out of game and that, or that bigger than, bigger than the game aura and personality. I think that's Dante. Because he's just having a guy. friend request. There we go. Okay, good work. Uh, oh yeah, and let's. I think my my point was on like because there's a question that's been raised: Would people be saying Shotzi's a superstar if he was on a team that wasn't Optic, right? Like based on his level of performance lately and his level of performance over the last, let's say, twelve months, is that superstar level if he wasn't Optic Shotzi? Um, and I think there's a good debate to be had on that. But this is why my opinion is that he's a superstar is is partly related to the fact that he's an Optic. Why? He is a face of the league um, because I know a lot of people are saying that you know, let's say Shotzi was on New York or something, and he was still the Shotzi we know, but he wasn't the absolute powerhouse clout, you know, nah, demon is, outside this, of the this game. Yes, this is BS. This is BS. No, it's BS. Here's why it's BS because 
if you want to say that from the optic angle, is this optic make him a superstar? No, because you have Hook and Illy, who on optic were a very seen players, but I wouldn't call them superstars because even though they were on optic and some content was being created, they weren't faces of the league by any regard. Any regard. Um, you could talk about whoever. You talk about back when uh, people get boosts when they're on optic for sure. You get a big opportunity to magnify and amplify your brand and what you do. Shotzi has taken advantage of it, and I think Pred is now taking advantage of it to grow and and become and form into that superstar mode. We've clearly seen players come and go off of Optic that haven't taken advantage of it. Uh, you have players like Oct Octane who came and then went to LAT and then became this big content powerhouse no matter what team he was on. I think Shotzi, he won, obviously, he, he became a super, super standout superstar in uh, you know winning champs, right? And then continued on onto Optic and then built, kept building his brand and solidifying his position as a superstar of a league over the course of several years. So I think the Optic part is a bit cheese, although it does amplify once you get there. That is without, we can't disagree with that. Um, All right, I'm ready to add on. Well, let's watch this clip. If you wanna... then, yeah, let's watch this clip and then we can add him right here. We're, right. Gonna, we're gonna watch the clip of, of Shotzi's response to Ake's not calling him a superstar, and then we'll add Ant to the call right now to give his take on this entire, this entire thing. Special guest appearance, everyone, by Nameless, guys. So let's watch this really quick. We lost that round. Mm -hmm. Bro, chat. Listen, dude. Oh my God. You guys in your like aches and shit, bro. I don't think what you understand. I don't think you guys understand like uh how it goes dude as like a fucking he's good to have in the scene because like bro you need someone that making you you need someone saying like brain that not not brain that shit but like just takes that like are just fucking either insane or or like fucking weird because if you just have some casual guys saying like oh you know pretty good Feel like that like the the show's not going to be entertaining the, the, the scene has nothing to talk about this whole thing with me being a superstar i could give two fucks what they talk about because i know i know what i'm capable of you know what i'm saying like that shit doesn't affect me oh fuck it's a good clip let's get in here let's get in here to talk about this clip and everything else it's gonna mess up, it's gonna mess up the cameras i, though, know, I, I have the four, I, have I have the four, four cameras i have the four mans don't worry all oh right God. i'm adding them producer ace don't worry i'm good no move. I hope this is the right one, by uh, the way. Hopefully it loads. I hope it's four man loads. I don't know if it's gonna load. Let's yeah. see. <laughs> oh, did I just break we, the we, show? Maybe. No, no, no. Give it a second. You might have. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Turn on your cam, son. Oh wait. My cam. Oh, you see, I mean we don't need the cam. You don't necessarily need the cam. <laughs> we can I'm only, see I, I can only be here for like ten minutes because I gotta go in mm -hmm. a little bit. Oh yeah, but all good, all good. Welcome I just to the show. I just want to say the show's great, it's vibey. But yo, you guys not having Hydra and Superstars faded, bro. Absolutely faded. I got to hear your reasoning behind that. Who wants to start? I mean, to me, it's very borderline. Like, Hydra is that good that, like, it, you could go either way on it. But in my opinion, Hydra isn't enough of a presence in COD to make that a guarantee. Wait, actually. Like, I look at Hydra. I, I mean, there's different. A BZ, but there's, for example. Dude, like, it's a BZ no, no. Superstar. The flaw in all this is that there's different routes to becoming a superstar COD player. You do it by being insanely fucking talented and winning everything or you can do it by being like a very solid player and also being extremely popular there's superstar players in in sports like that uh, it's kind of similar to that in that regard it's like I, you kind of agree with what i said kind of. i mean i mean i made that point i made that point earlier exact point i want to say this they're not separate from each other they're just it's just how it is you know what i mean i want to like, say you, this though as a superstar like I'm gonna like play like a bit of both sides here. A superstar walks into any team, right? Yeah, and yes, and they does have does, 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 of does, way. does does Hydra walk into any team right now? Yes, Hydra can walk into any team. Yes, you don't think he can? I, I think team? he could. Yeah, one hundred percent. A superstar I'll walks into any team. Listen, bro, but it's 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 different. It's like there's superstar players who are like they have that aura about him. Like how you were talking about with Sib, like, yeah, he could be potentially, but he's not, like, he doesn't stream a lot. Like, he doesn't have a bunch of fans. That's a crazy take, by the way, Ace. No, no, I said, bro, uh, potential. Because certain, bro, it, <laughs> Ant, if you disagree with me, let's, go, let's, 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 let's think about this. Let's think about this. There's certain players who just are going to be COD players, live or die, 
and never build anything outside of the game. They they can't they whether they want to be just competitors is fine, but some players don't have the personality or the look to be out of game personalities. Can we agree? Do we disagree there yet? Do we, any disagreement? I mean, yet? I, I, I mean, I think I disagree with like the look or whatever and, and how you're wording it, but I think some don't have the drive to do it. But you can be like a weirdo and become super popular. I mean, we, that's just how it is. Like, I mean, that's get, how the get, internet works. That's no, no. Works. Let me give me an example of a gamer who, like, the face of a league who's a weirdo who looks weird. Give me a name. Who, who looks weird? Sure. I mean, that is extremely <laughs> well, I mean, like, like <laughs> what, what do you I don't mean? know. You, 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 right if you want to call someone out, I don't know. To the face of the league, like let's say a faker. Faker's a good looking dude. He's, I mean, I think you know? I think Shroud looks kind of weird. He's one of the most popular streamers in the world. Streamer? <laughs> Wait, but he's not the face. I mean, Shroud's. I mean, he if he was still competing, he would be one of the faces. What do you I, think, mean? I don't think this Shroud's a weird terrible... looking dude. I don't think Shroud's a, a weird looking dude. And he's obviously a very sociable right, well, dude. Who's, who's, who's a guy right, like player who's a weird looking dude? What type of argument is this? Oh, God. What type of argument is this? What it like? I don't get. You okay, said, you okay. Said, let's talk about Krim. If you're not, attracted, no, no, should we talk about Krim? Be a superstar. Let's talk about Krim. Let's talk about Krim. Okay, let's talk about Krim. When he when he didn't have the optic machine around him, he found and he said it himself on the podcast with me when I was sitting there that he found the love to be dwindling. And what does that do to? Is due to his person. Right, here, listen. Forget this. Answer me this: Is Jokic a superstar in the NBA? Yes. All right, Hydra superstar though. It's the end of the discussion. That's a terrible, bro. That's a terrible take. Uh, and I, oh, how's that and, take? and I said the and I said the take earlier that there's two kinds of superstars: the skilled superstars and then beyond the game superstars. Right? There's two kinds. But to be the ultimate top three, top four, you have to combine those together. Jokic is the face of the franchise, and they've built basically this whole media machine behind okay. him. Is he not the face of? Yeah, because they have a, like the NBA teams have a shit ton of money. You got to understand these teams operate like like these league teams are operating on a different scale than actual sports teams, brother. And like, yeah, Hydra, if he goes live, he's probably gonna have a thousand people in his stream immediately, and he never streams. Like, that's how good that guy is. I mean, Hydra. I mean, I would give him a what European superstar is. He won. A, he he won champs. Am I gonna MVP give him at champs with a very very good KD that no one has ever done before from our region? Also along the fine along the line of that, he also, does walk into any team. But if, okay, yeah, like, but then if I have the argument of building the same argument I presented, uh, you were in chat, so I didn't see if you responded to it. But if you had your three, who would you build your team around? You'd you'd build around Hydra out of. Pred and Simp, you would pick Hydro to build your team around over those two? I mean, I think I think all three of them are superstar players. So I mean I, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm a W either way. Bro, that's cheese. You just you just mozzarella that's provolone me so those bad. Are three superstar pick one. players. And the least superstar of the three is Pred. Oh, okay. I will I'll 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 kind of, I'll give you some agreement with that. So then in your opinion, is is Pat's point of the you know, we can't have twenty percent of the league be superstars, is that true or false? Wait, what Pat's saying is ultra faded. Listen, we have 12 teams. If we had 48 teams or 32 teams like the NFL or whatever, like, you know what I mean? If we had way more teams, the field would be huge and it wouldn't be that same percentage. Just with a, a skewed way to like form an argument. Like, so, so you disagree with them? You think 20% of the league can be superstars? A hundred percent. Yeah, I do. I hundred percent. I hundred percent believe that. I think that's the. I think that would be the pinpoint reason. Depends on the definition, right? Because exactly. it's like from my angle, if, if Hydra is going to be an, a, a superstar, then you... Abizi also has to be a superstar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Um, which you can, I, yeah, you can make I the put, I, That's what I'm saying. I, I, I would put Abizi in superstar. How could you not? Yeah, really? So if Abizi is a superstar, listen, then Simp has to be a superstar, then Cell has to be a superstar. And yeah, that's why they're on the best. Exactly. That's why they've been the that, best. That's why. That's, that's the problem. That's, that's a slippery slope. That, that, no, it's not a that, problem, bro. That's why they've been the best like players in the league like since it's happened. It's not a problem to have that many superstars. It's a good thing. But also, you become a superstar by performance and also like having crazy moments, big wins, MVPs, things of that nature, as in pro and having a prolonged career. So it's like, yeah, Sim's been a superstar for a very long time. He's had down and up years, but he's remained at the top. And then Rap. other player other players have come in, like Hydra's come in. He's a superstar now. So you're gonna have more and more as the league grows and expands. It's like Odell Be Odell's a superstar, but like he's not as good as he once was. But he still has like top five most followers on Instagram. Like for an NFL player, he's huge. You yeah, know he what falls, I mean? He, falls he might not be that superstar side. talent, but when you go to the Raven shit, he's the one giving speeches in the locker room. He's he they're showing him off. You know what I mean? Like that's just how it works as the league keeps going. Like we're gonna have three more, names. More you think you think you think Hydra's giving speeches to the team? 
No, he's not, but he is the man. Like he's he he's the one you're putting highlights up of, bro. He's the guy we're talking about when we come back. He's the guy you're talking about after a series that they win. He is the guy of that team. They won champs. Uh, they won three names. Uh, okay, go ahead. Three names that come to this. All right. Rap. The whole like we can't have too many people in there. We had Messi, Suarez, and Neymar playing for Barcelona. Superstars, right? Yeah, they're huge. You know what I mean? Su like, su su superstars, right, Rab? Yeah, I, I would be inclined to agree. Yeah. I, I think, think we can possible, have more. I, 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 think we can, I think we can have more than one. Barcelona player. have a squad of twenty-five right, players. All right, so so Whereas, about this? you know what I mean. There's three superstars. Yeah, no, I, no obviously, team. obviously, that obviously, my point is, is that like you can have more than one player from each team as a superstar, though. Yeah, I agree as well. But I also think it just depends on the conversation. It's like, I mean, all of a sudden we're talking about superstars. Then Clay's, like then Clay's a superstar. Fuck it, everyone's a superstar now. No, yeah, you know I, what? I guess everyone's my point a superstar, is that bro. I, I have stars and superstars. People are saying, oh, there's superstars. And then there's like your fucking ultra star, which is like your. <laughs> yeah, we're making different tiers. Players, right? It's annoying. Like, yeah, I people mean, are tier listing superstars. And I'm like, we'll just call it. Star, superstar, it ultra star, cares, like. number one star, goat. Like, bro, why are we making so many levels? There's, there can't be 20% of the league be superstars. It just doesn't exist. It's not real. That's not what a superstar is. If 20% of the league if are superstars. If our league wasn't 12 teams, it'd be different. But our league is 12 teams. So that's okay, so out of the Okay, so brother, teams. so out of the 12, there's, a, there's the top 10%, which is four or five players max. Those need to be superstars. Those are superstars. Beyond that are the B players, the C players, the D players. Because what our league. What qualifies Scrap as a superstar or Hydra? He's a bigger personality. Bigger personality, better stats. Is he? Better stats. For sure. Look at the amount of attack rev videos that people are on thumbnails of. That's how you determine it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Ant, Ant, you, I mean, you think I mean, Ant, you think Hydra's a big person? He doesn't. He he's maybe he in Europe maybe, but like he doesn't pop if, off here. If he streamed more, he would. But like it just like that. I don't think that that. If you're that level of talent, I don't think it takes away. Like for you, if you don't make content, I really don't. I think that that's more so on the team. Like they should capitalize on him and how how. I mean, when he does interviews and shit, people love it. He's a lovable dude. I, I think people appreciate I don't disagree. his level of play. Okay, wait, Ant, is Shotzi a superstar? Absolutely. What? That's the, he's the he is the superstar. That okay. is an insane take out of Pat. Okay, I, that, 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 so I Shotzi want to clarify is, each point of this. Shotzi is the superstar, also the face of the league, bro. Okay. I agree. I also think there's a bit of a play style thing involved. Like, part of why Messi's a superstar is because also, so is Dashy, the talent right. he has is, like, unfathomable. And it's, like, something about the way Shotzi plays the game is, like, that adds a bit to it does. his yeah. status. Yeah. Uh, Wait, I you think guys you should think, have you superstars, ultra superstar? stars, giga star, mega star. Is Dashy a superstar? This is a good question. Is Dashy a superstar? Yeah, he is. 100%. How could he not? All, all people do is talk about, like, how, how good he is, but how he hasn't won that much. You know what I mean? And in that regard, it's like he's extremely talented. He has a bunch of fans, and he's he's one of the most talked about. Like I don't know how he could not be a superstar. Uh, I have Dutchie as a superstar and Pred not personally. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Ah oh, man, Dash. I don't know. <laughs> That's hard. That's a hard, hard, hard one. Only because yeah, the the winning has something to do with it. Hydra, if he didn't win champs, I don't think would be in this conversation right now. I mean, is Joe Burrow a superstar? No. A star. Yeah, he is. He's a star. Yeah, yeah. Well, here we go again. He's not a super yeah, yeah, bro. He's not. A, <laughs> my yeah, my example, is. the Jokic example is probably your best one because someone's just so undebatable. Which is why I think our superstar, who's undebatable, that doesn't make content and his, his personality outside the game is not that big. Is simp. He's just undeniable. He's he's the Jokic. That's our him and Selium. I think are the two Jokic's you can you can say for the CDL. But you saying you, with you saying with conviction, bro's not a superstar is insane. Bro, he's not. He's a star. But he's he's not a superstar. He's right, not. Well, we just we could just disagree on like our our logic towards this. But either way, I mean, there's no really way to define superstar until we start giving out like all pros and shit. Then we could be like, well, he has two, three all pros, but I know. Somebody I, will have to. That, but that's the thing. That, that's the whole thing, though. You have to be able to separate people into. All of these things, like Rab is saying, I'm saying, all four of us are saying. There's not enough there's, awards and shit to be able to actually separate, so it's all just going to be opinion. No, exactly, though. But you have to base it on, let's say, something, some metric. You can't just be feeling an opinion. 
has to be top 10%. Okay, so four players. Four players max. Once you get past that, then you're outside of the top 10%. So you're legitimately just giving everybody participation trophies. Even if they're very good, it's still a partic participation trophy if you're outside of the top 10% of anything. Whether it's a league, whether it's your workforce, whether it's your class, it doesn't, it doesn't it matter. It doesn't work because we only have 12 teams. I'm a superstar. So I got a C plus in chem. It Woo! Doesn't work. It, it I'm a superstar. It doesn't work because, because there's only 48 players. So realistically, all these players are absolutely godlike. If the field was bigger and we had like like 20 teams even 20 teams oh, it'd be easier to have that argument this but. is a mozzarella there is also the argument that like you also have to consider all of challenges in a way because like we we do. those aren't players in the league but if you look at if you look at other sports you have the tiers but it's like we're only looking at it from a 50 player perspective whereas if you looked at it from the perspective of like 300 players considering some of the yeah. you know challenger players then it looks more reasonable that no but that's unreasonable because i'm not changing my opinion that's but, out yeah, of the league that, that's like saying point. oh with the NBA, we're going to start considering the stars from the B League or the G League. Excuse me, G League. No, why? Why are we... No, it's just if our league was bigger. We have 12 teams, like... But it's... The, but it's... but it's not. You can't say if, 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 Listen, if. back in the day, we had more teams. Right. So then from out of that pool, you can pick differently. Top 10% is no. a bigger pool. Mm. It's not from back in the day where we're using the CWL amount of teams to today's league. Today's league is highly concentrated... A uh, group of players so you, you that are the best. You of the don't best. just re you don't just reduce like who's a superstar based on the league being condensed out of the community's control. What? That's, yeah, that's yes, like, you that's do. If there's four no, teams, don't. if there's four teams, there has to be literally of sixteen players. There has to be so one or two NBA players that are the best. Was so the, if the NBA was just reduced to the playoff teams, you're telling me that certain players just aren't superstars anymore? If it, if the if it was the whole league format was changed completely and those other teams weren't even included no, in the league, then like yes, that. absolutely. Then you only have these players to choose from. It got no. reduced, so now your pool is different. You have to adjust to the new pool. If you have a class of a thousand people, the top ten percent is one thing. If, the, if you have a class of ten people, we then one guy stands out. If we were operating a flawless league and the teams are operating and marketing their players correctly, I would agree. But I disagree. I think that we actually have to have like intelligent conversations about this and not just be like oh only five percent can be no we have to do it ourselves and recognize who's actually operating and performing at a superstar level and not be Wait, ignorant hey, and just be like hydra is a superstar and then it's our job to educate fans and stuff to understand that hey so can i ask you a question is are you putting pred as a superstar of a hydra personality wise yeah because of, because of his because but of yeah, but, but you, your argument of Pred being a superstar was that he's carrying a whole country on his back. Yes, I, I that's part of it. That wasn't my argument for him. That was part of my argument. Hydra's doing the exact same shit, really. Yeah, but Pred streams. Pred streams makes content. He's gonna be an optic. Hydra's an I, Hydra's an MVP. One champs. Okay, great. So, one of the hardest achievements to ever do. I agree. That's fine. So is Krim. So, so is then he's a superstar. He also won multiple events and MVPs last year. <laughs> that guy. I agree. Yeah. And he's okay, and wait, wait. controller player wait. of the year. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That's one year of COD. Is 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 are we gonna this is a reason this is again goes back to the recency what about bias Pred? problem. Wait, again, recency bias problem. This is you're going back to this. Lamar won in World War II. He's the most accomplished player in that game. Is he a superstar now? No, he, I mean, he can't. Lamar didn't, oh, Lamar I thought didn't he was win drop, champs. Yeah. Like, he got second at champs. He, he also say, wasn't yeah. the best player on his team. Like, he, but Okay, that's not the point, though. Like, okay, but it's arguable now. Uh, this year, Paco doesn't look like the best player on his team. If I mean, had, I disagree with that. I uh, think I think Kismet's been the best in S&D. I, I think, been getting I think Kismet is their X factor. If Kismet doesn't play well, they lose. That's just what happens. Kismet's been playing wait, very, didn't very Hydra, well. Wait, didn't Hydra, get, didn't Hydra win champs with MVP and then get second at champs next year? Yeah, he's godlike, bro. I'm not saying nah, he's a bad player. Listen, listen, I'm not disagreeing he's a bad player, nah. but who has potential aura to be a to be the Ronaldo of the league? We call him LaPred. Am I fucking am I, am I, am I, what dude, the, the chat disagreeing with me right now is actually crazy just because we call him LaPred for a reason. Because listen, he, if he went from was on optic, Australia to Optic be, in three years. If Hydra was on Optic, you would just wouldn't even be a discussion. Didn't Hy did, did, did opti Hydra didn't opti will not didn't be on Optic because he can't he doesn't stream. He won't be on Optic. This is what I'm saying. This Wait, they, the they wanted, wanted it. They, they, they wanted him, though. They wanted they him over Pred. Who do they choose? Who do they choose? What do you mean, who do they choose? He didn't choose them. Brother. What? <laughs> he was supposed to be on Optic, bro. Oh, my God. If Hydra God. joined Optic, Scump would have come competing, too. Oh, my God.
They wanted him before they ran it back with their team cut and turned up too. It's just yeah. no, it's going to be Cami Hydra. The, the chat, the chat are, are just they're, they're fate to take. They're calling me fate to take for saying if there's a thousand people in a class, top ten percent are the star are the superstars and stars. If there's ten people in the class, not ten people could be all stars. You need to have one person. That's a championship mindset. I'm just saying. That's a champion mindset. Sorry, we don't have that in this chat apparently, but. You can't say everyone's a star. Half the league are stars. Yes, they're great just, at cause. Hey, so but they're I, not just, I just think that I just think. Well, from my perspective, I'm not going to change my opinion. I understand. But I think I think that the league, if it was expanded, it'd be different. But I think the way the league is, we have 12 teams. COD has been around for a long time, and a lot of the talent is hoarded on four teams. So Agreed. I think that there's a lot of superstars on those teams, and in order to be successful in Call of Duty, Ace, you know, Trace competed. I've competed. Sometimes you have to take a back seat to certain people. That's just I, how I mean, it is. I, wait, and if that, I think and if you that, joined the stream late because I, I argue this that point reduces already. Your, if that reduces your case to being a superstar, then like I, that's faded to me. No, no, I, don't wait, think I already addressed this. This is what I addressed directly in the start of this argument. To be a star on a team, let's say you're a Gwyn, you're a slasher, you're attached right now. You know, you're, you're a star on your team, on your lower team with different, different pool of talent. Sure. The, what makes you a superstar is being able to be on a top team surrounded by other star or highly talented players and stand out of them. That is what makes you the superstar. LeBron going to the Miami Heat with D-Wade and then carrying D-Wade makes him the superstar. Kobe so that having redu that, re that, that reduced that reduced uh, the superstar ability of Dwayne Wade. No, it just shows it, it shows He's you who's the star and who's the superstar. This is the this I mean, is the argument. You can't I how mean, can listen, listen, was wait, a and, superstar and, 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 regardless. And, 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 let me let me carry on here. Let me carry. This is the difference here. If Shotzi was on Vegas Legion He's, he's uh, the star of the team, but you can't call him a superstar just yet. Like I'm saying if he wasn't Optic before, it's like rewinding time. You say he's a star, he's very good, his potential's crazy, but we have to see him on a team full of talent to see what he actually can do. So then you go from a star to now let's say you're on phase, Optic, NY, or whatever from this year, the best teams. Then you perform there and like you're scrap. You're outshining the other three, top three players in the world. You're outshining them. You're simp. You're outshining the other three, or you're selling You're outshining the other three. These guys are being better than the best, which makes them what? Better than what? A superstar. So then, who's Not the superstar on phase? Uh, in my opinion, simp because of all the total totality of his game. Plus, what outside about of the, last year, because Abizi was definitely wait, the best wait, player on wait, that team. Wait, wait, wait. Plus, outside of the game, people know who simp is. That's the other part of this. People don't know who Abizi is. Outside the game, not as not as much as simp. Simp actually has a. Simp has some following outside of the game, outside of just COD. I mean, what are you basing that off of? Uh, numbers. YouTube numbers. I mean, Abiz do you know? I mean, Abizi was godlike last year. If you're saying that he... I mean, I think they're both the same level of Superstar, brother. They've basically done... They've been teaming the entire time. Right, but then but then you then you have to add on the next Abizi's layer. Abizi's been the godlike next layer the entire it. time. The next layer to it is who's done... Who's more... Behind the camera, who does more content? Who you know, just others, other things to who makes. Does you... he do more content than Abe? Because I'm pretty sure I see Abe live every day. Uh, live, Abe does stream a bit more, but Simp, I think his YouTube is bigger. It's a bit of nuance because it's like Simp, it's... MVP, right esports controller player. Also, because his name's Simp, like he, he gathered a bit of. He had like a cult following for his name being said. Like, yeah, but this, no, but this, this stuff. The, the, the argument sucks though because like we're literally saying if you're an optic, you're a superstar. Yeah, basically. That's, yeah, exactly. That's not no. I know. I already. That's I already what you're saying. You know. Yeah. Right. No. No. You're saying. You're no. saying that. You're saying that Pred deserves it over Hydra, even though Hydra has better accolades than Pred. But because he's not on Optic, he's not a superstar. Yeah, like no, I, I hate that argument. That. I didn't say that. Terrible. Okay, listen. Abz has 15k subs on YouTube. Simp has 60,000. Like I'm saying, why is everyone calling me? F Bro, I hate the chat when they just say faded, but they don't actually know the numbers. I hate this shit. Listen, I didn't say this optic take. I'm going to repeat what I said before about optic. You have players like Hook and Illy who were on this on these teams and didn't have the personality to captivate the optic audience to carry with them. Even Krim had trouble when he left. Whereas I think if Shotzi left, went to FaZe, went wherever the hell he wanted to go, he would carry his audience with him. Pred, if he goes anywhere, people like Pred's personality as himself. He's a funny guy. He fits... You know, Skump, Skump could have been on any team. Skump, even now, people still watch him now because he's a funny guy. He's good. He was great. He was talented. They have the full package. 
This is the argument that I've already made, and I don't know why we're bringing back old arguments that I've already Abizia, contested. Ab Abizia, 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 Abizia has 50 more K followers on Twitch than Simp. Tw yeah, Twitch, followers like, are, I, Twitch followers listen, are honestly Listen, I just disagree. I disagree with your <laughs> definition of superstar, <laughs> so are. we can just like... Yeah, wait, 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 just wait, 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 you, you just said... You just said... Look at the, are, do not, said wait, wait, listen. Seven, I'll say it again. <laughs> Twitch followers compared to YouTube subscribers is a different tier. And I think we can all agree as creators that that's true. That's true. That's a fact. It, you're, you're twi if you have a, so there's people who have a million... So what, a so million what numbers do we go off then? The numbers that matter. What? The numbers that matter. YouTube numbers. This is, bro. Yeah, I just disagree with you. As we do the show on Twitch, I love this. Uh, whatever, bro. I I'm just, I, okay. I mean, obviously, it's agree to disagree. It just is what nah, it like, is. It, it's, it's funny. Like, I think, think at the end of the day, I, I find it hilarious to got on some topic because I just don't think it matters at all. Like, I just don't think the players really care. Yeah, I absolutely don't, care. It, it's only a fan thing. Like, as Shotzi said, He's like, he doesn't give a shit whether people consider. Oh, no, no, no player should give play. a fuck what anyone I outside of it. YouTube and like, if this guy want, clearly people know who he is. He's barely uploaded. He has like 15 videos, and I'm looking at it: 94k, 70k, 170k, 22k, 46k. Like, oh, bro, not, people not, know not, who he is. Man, I'm not disagreeing like, that he's, like, that he's, he's a, a no, he's a known guy. I'm not disagreeing with this. I'm just saying, of that team, if you're gonna say who's the superstar of that team, no, it's both of them, bro. It's either Cell or it's Simp. Abizi is a is right there too. No, it's simple. Abizi then so cell fall cell falls more into the category of Hydra if that's your logic. I, no, I agree. I I say it's either one of those two depending on because we made so much nuance to this argument. You have to pick one or the other. Do you get what I'm saying? There's a there's a nuance argument that we made for Rab and me and all of us have made these so many distinctions that you either have to pick one of those two or you go with all four of them basically. That's Listen, the I just think there's four superstar god squads, and it's made it very, very difficult. Ace is worse than Ace. Y'all out of your mind. Just saying. To iron out who's the superstar because the talent is hoarded on four teams. That's that's the. That's, that's the probably issue. a fair point because, like, if you look at last year, like, who can ghosty and people that an Illy is an example. Yeah, it was different. And even Envoy, it's like no one really considered those players superstars despite the yeah. fact that they were an optic yes but now the talent but now the team is so stacked that like you look at the team and you're like shit i can kind of make a case dude i hate when rab says something and the chat's like yeah dude i'm in the same point but like ace is fucking faded no, dude but he's coming at it from a different lens than you were it's different because if you were to have this argument like last year i think it'd be different but the teams have formed god squads this year so the talent is like hoarded on four teams yeah so i think i think this year has allowed us to see who really is the best because before when it was distributed you could see who was stars and who could stand out but now you have four, three four teams with the best players all on these single squads you can see who stands out the most and who truly is the superstar of the I team i mean the game is the game is also just like it's different like sometimes you have to take a back seat like i feel like draza took a back seat stage one now he's fucking super frying yeah, like these I agree. last two series, he's been unbelievable. He's he's I don't Let think he's more of a superstar than Celium. Let me ask you a question. Ace. You said out of the four people in New York, Sib was the superstar, correct? I said Sib had the highest potential to become a superstar. To become a superstar. He is not currently. I'm not saying he is currently. Well, I, mean, out of I, all I, of them. I would argue if that from your perspective I don't agree with this, but I would say from your perspective where you're coming from, it would be skies on that team, not Sib. Skies, but I think it's Hydra. Skies, I actually, I will. Skies has been, he's been outside of the game, like TikTok and YouTube and stuff. He's been really killing the content stuff. I will give him that for sure. From your perspective, and he's fucking disgusting. Of course, yeah, but, of course, of but course. But it's Hydra is the superstar, bro. On that team, that team, that team no. has that team to me has the biggest what, like not what if potential, but like so many. Like those guys all have. If if they took Hy uh, Hydra and obviously. Promote, not promote him, but uh, advertised him more to the European side and, and really pushed it heavy, content based to those people, to the French and all that. I mean, I think he he could he could be another face of the league as well, like face face of the league, truly the face of the league. Um, but you wouldn't call him the face of the league because he doesn't do those things. Uh, Dante just has a captivating type personality. Will will he ever cross the bridge? I don't know because he also. It's just Mr. Mysterious guy and likes to be that role. Skies, I think, is actually a great shout, and I didn't, I didn't really consider him in this. So I will say, Skies to me probably is the closest to being the superstar on that team, only because he is crazy on the content side and yeah, disgusting in the game. So that is a good take. That is a good shout right there, as Skies. Sure. Yeah. All right. And yo, but yeah, I gotta bounce. I don't have my wife or something, but yo, I love this show. 
It's actually a vibe. I'll be tuning in more often, boys. Yeah, yeah. Next time, if you want to come out with your cam on and you want to hop on anytime, let us know, bro. Oh, yeah, man. Take it easy, fellas. Later, brother. Late. Have a good day. Sure. What a time. What a Well, wow, thanks time. for those who joined it. What a segment, baby. Dude, what a segment we had. Can right we get there. some, hey, in the Listen, chat, man. some waimelesses? Can we get some W's, some waimelesses that uh, he just midday argument in the chat decides to hop on? Waimless, man. Absolute W out of another. I am on. done with this topic. Can we talk about some matches? This topic is ass. I think we may need to. I think we may need Absolutely. to. Absolutely. We, we can jump ahead now. We can jump ahead. We've, we've kind of. Beat the hell out of this topic. I gotta take off this. I gotta take off this nan jumper too, bro. I've been getting heated a bit too much. <laughs> All right, let's let's jump ahead to some matches here. Uh, okay. Get the layers off, Trey. Chat, what do y'all think? Chat, W there. W W. Uh, everyone's hitting lace. I'm saying W nameless, and I'm getting laces. What the hell? <laughs> Dude, y'all are weird, bro. Y'all are weird. Y'all are weird. Y'all are weird. Listen, okay. Matches, right? CDL matches been a crazy, a, a kind of snooze fest the first couple days, but then Sunday was obviously killer. But let's go through a few of these matches. Uh, we have quite a few pulled up. Let's go through and just give us, you know, some some thoughts here and there about what happened. I got it pulled up now. Uh, we can all see. We fix well, it. I think like there's a few teams that I want to look for, right? I mean, if we want to start with Gorillas, oh my god, yeah, we could start with Gorillas. Uh, just, just, a... just, just, just blow it up, bro. Just jettison it. Just nah, jettison like, nah, it. let's, nah, like, we're not gonna sit here and talk about it too much. They're fucking shit. Yeah. Are they the worst team in the league? This is all I want to know for you boys. By if they're losing to the Ravens, <laughs> the Ravens just lost to bloody. By Eric, far. Man. Listen, this whole oh segment about superstars got me heated. These teams are fucked. <laughs> not even heated. I'm not even heated about, like, anyone's opinion or anything like that. I'm just heated about, like, the argument sucked, and now we're into the games. That this oh, team's ass. Sucks. This team's yeah. ass. They were good. They were good. Stage one. I don't want to say good, but like they had like upset potential. They were looking decent. Wait, you what remember happened? we joked about this series, like between the salted fellow who was going to get shit on the most, and I think I was. I said assault would have fewer kills. I think so. I think I got that one right. Fellow actually went positive. Like, look, I'm going to be straight up. If you're letting Clay and Fellow go positive against you in a series, both green in 2024, just chalk it up. Let's chalk there, it up, boys. There's a, I heard something interesting too. I don't know. We didn't get the, we don't have the clip for it, but someone said, I think it was Pat or someone on the flank, that the LAG coaches aren't getting paid or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? What? that? So, okay. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure I said this in like the first episode we had. I'm not like, even. I don't. So if that's true, I'm pretty sure they pay. I don't know what's true this year. Last year they paid for their travel. I think. I would fucking hope so. Should I hope they, they paid for something. <laughs> you know, like, like something. I think that might be about it. But listen, the fact that okay, so there's a lot of problems here, right? This LAG team, I do believe. I'm gonna first off and say that they are the worst team in the game. I said that last week as well. And they looked decent in the first split only because this is, again, a case as to, you know, when you have AM players or new players starting off in a game, they can look good because people haven't learned the game yet. Now you fast forward into Major 2 where once people are very situated, comfortable playing this game, you have coaches that aren't getting paid. You have players that are fresh out of challengers that over other challengers players may not deserve the spot they got. No disrespect, but we're just speaking strictly off talent and, you know, results. This LAG team is in a very terrible spot. Uh, I hate the fact that they, that this coach may have got this team in by taking the most incredible pay cut. And basically it's very poor reflection on LAG as well, that they chalked up whatever team they had before. And also their previous coach, I believe it was Marky B. They chalked them up because I'm assuming that they would have, they would have asked for some money, but it's like a very, very, poor look to find out that these coaches are not getting paid this team of is, is definitely friendship team friendship league this is the friendship team this is the true friendship squad here is it going to cost them money to hire a new player like are they no. going to have listen, to fork out is, any the, money listen this is what they need to do if they, obviously they don't the, the org don't care let's be real the org doesn't care about them so <laughs> you know they're by themselves i don't even know if they can get the org to type up a new fucking contract they might have to get the players in for a free too <laughs> um what they need to do is they need listen uh, don't blow it up all right keep two of the best keep keep two people and those two people are diamond con and estrial mm -hmm. bring in two other people bring in an ar and another sub that can match them that are actually 
I'm get not going to say at this that... point, man. I want to see Flames Destrial. Come on, you got to do Listen, it. Get, the... get get two Come challenger on. players on in the min. They ain't going to give a fuck. They just want to shoot against some pros. Even even go to the top teams. You go to the top teams and challengers. They're going to join you. They want some money. You know, they want to be in the league. Do what you need to do. Get it over and done with right now. I, I, don't even let it go to the major. Fuck it. Get it done now. <laughs> and. Respectfully. I, I, you, you're gonna ask me as well who do i think i don't fucking anyone anyone listen respectfully adam assault has is this game been criminal i think overall just not been a great player i don't know how he's still there i actually rated assault he, he I but mean, i don't know how he's still this team player. he's a world champ you know like you you honestly would expect more from him being the vet of the team to bring more, maybe it is behind the scenes, the leadership, maybe he calls some of the strats when they're in practice. There's a chance, obviously, there's a chance that that's his role. Uh, he plays like kind of an accuracy role on his team. But accuracy shooting. Assault's not shooting back. And this has been for multiple series, whether it's his team's fault or his fault, whatever it may be. Yeah, I agree with the, with a take two or even take three off this team. Assault fame and maybe, you know, I think Estra's actually proven himself decently. So maybe take two. I would take Gunless and someone else. That'd be my shout as to who I would take, gunless and somebody, uh, maybe Flames, but you got to you gotta come back with that original squad like I was talking about last year. Everyone that's left from that team, try to get him over here, make some noise, Temp and Donnie, say, uh, excuse me, Temp and Donnie, Temp and, and gunless, <laughs> something of that regard, get some vets on this yeah, team and try it. to make an actual push with players that are have CDL experience. This rookie experiment that you've done looked good for a stage, but now their inexperience is coming out right in front of you they are the worst team in the league by far i genuinely I mean, don't even care what they do <laughs> nah, they, listen listen like, sh I listen listen do. scrap scrap the donny scrap the gunless bro bring in two players that are winning in challenges and do that like this whole the the, the experience isn't needed uh, well, dylan Re it's dylan rex and brack or whoever some some top fc black type squad or maybe some Europeans. Bro, look, get, but 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 boston just won the fucking stage one elite bring two of them boys in they're good. You know they're good. We talk about, you know, challenges, this, this, that, and that. We can't add them to the league or whatever like that. Like, in terms of, like, the superstar thing, bring two of those boys in. Bring Pentagram in, bro. This guy's been nah, looking for a shot for give, years. Give Yeez, a he... give Yeez a chance. Give Pentagram a chance. Yeah, A lot, bro, lot of guys like, deserve bro, chances here. The thing is, these Pen guys would actually say yes. Because, like, if you're Cammy, you ain't saying yes to this. You're going to get a better offer. But bro, Cammy's already got an offer, bro. Like, Cammy's probably probably got an offer uh, contract there, ready to go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wait for this team to shit the sheets. Yeah, Cammy's on that team, <laughs> done and dusted. If we don't win the event, we we chalk it up. Get, <sighs> bro, get Pentagram on a league team now, man. Please, you have to. The guy has been the guy has been deserving of a chance for so many years, man. Lag has got to accept their spot as a development team. Right? There's quite a few development squads in the league that are basically just you find talent, you develop them for a year or two, and then you send them off to the top six, top five orgs, basically. It's a money issue, I think, more, more or less, but you have to accept that role. Some of these people aren't working, right? In this case, Assault and Fame are the two players that, in my opinion, Fame had a good streak, but like he's kind of inconsistent. You got to try out some new players, develop some new talent, try out some of these guys who deserve a chance, Yeez, Pentagram, uh, uh, Brack, Dylan, Rex. Uh, I don't even. There's more names too that I'm missing. Give them a chance. Maybe, maybe you find something great and you could come back, major three split, and do something with your squad and actually put up a fighting chance and not go. You know, I think they. I think they're gonna have the. I think they're gonna be last place, kind of going ahead into the end of the game if they don't make a change. I think they fall to last, last, last place. I mean, fuck it, bro. Sign them on the min. If they fry, sell them for double or triple, bro. Do some business around it. Yeah, they're paying nothing, though. So at the same time, they'll probably stick. Let's be honest here, guys. Can we be honest? No, no. But, yeah, no, for real. But, like, if there's, there's, it's not going to cost them anything, really. It's going to cost them... Uh, I think it costs you two months' salary to get rid of someone. If they, I mean, they might be penny pinching. They might see this team for the whole year. If they can... If, right, if, if they, they don't... keep this team, I will be... I will actually be boycotting all of their matches. I might have to not talk <laughs> about their matches in videos. No lie. Um, but, I, but, but, but like I said, this series sucked. Um, yeah. Carolina should always win this every day of the week. I, I'm surprised they've even lost a map. Let's, uh, let's jump to the next series, yeah? yeah? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I think in general, I want to talk about Boston, really. The way, I know that the way you've probably got them listed up here is uh, kind of back to front. I got, eight, yeah, I got ATL, chronology. LAT, but you want to jump um, to Boston? Boston and Optic? Well, this was the first series of the weekend, Boston Optic. I just wanted to talk about Boston. All right, let's go. Because 
Well, I obviously want to let you say your piece, Ace. Yep. But, dearie me, this team, I honestly am impressed that they somehow won a couple of maps in this series because the way they got body slammed game one, and it's true for game four, and the way they showed zero ice game five. Also, don't know what's going on with them like in search this year because Slash is a good S&D player. You should think that he's got a good S&D system on the team, but they have been pretty shambolic, up 4-2 in the game five, and they lose. Shocking, shocking, shocking. They got blown out of the water on the Karachi. It ain't looking good. Priest goes positive. Congratulations. But the team is just not working. Um, I think what I want to say on this team is that at some point, you've got to look further up. Because the way the decisions have been made over the last couple of years is highly questionable. The rosters that have been formed, getting top four as they did last year and dropping Nero to try and get better, and then completely ruining the relationship with Nero to which point he doesn't come back the next season. They have made weird roster decisions over the last couple of seasons since they've been in the league that they think are going to work and they don't work out. Like, I genuinely think Snoopy's good. I know that Ace is going to disagree on this. Yep. But my feeling is that if, if Snoopy was on a different <laughs> team in a different system, I'm almost certain that you would see a better version of Snoopy than what you see here. Um, like, I like Zed. I like Dens. But from a coaching perspective and a GM perspective, have they proven to me at all that they have any idea what they're doing? The jury's out on that. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to give Boston Breach a little bit of credit in this series only because, yeah, they got bodied in the hard points, but they were resilient in the S&D and the control. Um, and I feel like Optic learned a lot, especially that terminal. When we saw him come back this week with it, they looked at, Optic looked insane in S&D. And in, control, and in terminal specifically, they looked insane. So I'm sure, I think, you know, Boston may have taught him some stuff that Optic picked up from. Overall, though, the team just doesn't work. Priesta actually, surprisingly, as much criticism as we give him, he is their best player, stats-wise, in Major 2. So we got to give him some credit where credit is due. Asim does look bad, but he is trying to head bash a bit, too. And I think, again, there's a pacing issue with him and Snoop. And if you were to take Asim and put him as a sub, like we talked about last week, it would be a better decision than to leave him where he is now. Um... Yeah, the team, I'm sure, is just very... I'm, if I'm Austin, if I'm Slasher, I'm just in a very angry position because I'm getting towards the end of my career, right? Last few years, probably, at least for Slashers because age, you know, all that stuff, right? Um, you're wasting talent. You're wasting time by keeping players that, again, aren't... shouldn't be in the league at this time. Put them on a different team. Let Snoopy develop on a Vegas Legion get yeah then it's <laughs> send him to vegas i love that but idea. you have to look at the you know they're gonna take him for sure trey's point about i think it was trey's point about these the roster decisions on boston you have a boston breach organization that kept that keeps sensor on their academy team at the expense of them winning that's the kind of organization again i get it it's no, good no, for no, fans no. it's good for fans it's good for engagement it's good because you know doug does have a huge brand i'll agree to all of that is your forefront winning or is your forefront the fans? Is your forefront Snoopy is a good player or is that he appeals to a Latino audience and to the, you know, this like, he's the, could be the new Shotzi face of the league type of player. What are we doing here? Is the idea the brand or the skill? That's where I'm at with Boston Breach. The team sucks. As of right now, they're, 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 I think they're getting deeper and deeper in a hole as this major goes on. I don't think we see them make any noise when Bring it comes to Bring up the phase numbers, because, you know, Optic was one thing, but phase shows how it's done against team. I mean, also, they're bottom of the league right now. I, I'm pretty sure they're 40 points dead last in the league. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I mean, this was, you know, I, we don't need to talk about it. I mean, uh, someone in the chat said the AR duo, duo is awful, but again, Priest has the best numbers on this team yeah. right now. So I would very much uh, disagree. Boston are dead last in the league right now. In standings, yeah. Um, yeah, in standings, they're dead last in the league right now. Um, like you said, credit where credit's due. They definitely fought back this series. Um, Shotzi had an unbelievable series. Can't take that away from him. even. I've even done the. Uh, I've even done the ace. The ace takeaways map one, which he, you know, he went positive. 
20 take away that and he still dropped the 1.43 you know what i'm there saying it's like he's definitely fried definitely fried this series uh i would have liked to have seen him uh you know just speaking about optic i'd like to have seen him you know dominate it a bit more with 1.72 kd but you know it happens um I just, uh, yeah, I just, obviously, I just don't think the Boston team works right now. Uh, I don't think Asim came and helped them much in terms of, like, against the top top level teams, um, which I think we all know is going to happen. Uh, it's it's just, he, th- he's made them better, Ace, but, like, he's not made them, you know, they need another change to make yeah, it work. The other thing Grayson Trey is, like, you know, you know the storyline about Asim, how, he starts the season really good, and then as time progresses, he kind of falls off a bit, and it's like, here we are in March. If that format continues, come like May, it ain't pretty, and it already ain't pretty. You just got to listen. Like I said, Asim's not joined. He's made him better, Ace, but he hasn't made him, you know, compete, compete, compete. They're still losing games, and they need. They, did, they just need another change. That's what they need. I'll, I'll agree. I'll agree Asim is been underwhelming for the team right we can all i think be fair on that point but it's tough when who you're running with is progressively just getting worse and not making the right play it's like being pred when shotzi is getting shit on it's not fun because you're left in a in a kind of a a precarious situation because the player that's supposed to be entry being your entry and doing these kind of being the the damn the abizi the damage dealer the one who's supposed to be entry he's not doing what he's supposed to do Right, these last two series, you have Snoopy with a 0.81. Work again, again against good teams, right? So this is the real challenge for Boston. Priest the 1.0 against the good teams. He's playing slasher 0.9. He's doing his his role. Ace some 0.87. Snoopy most deaths and a 0.81. Then you have him in the phase series. Let's go to that. Uh, dropping a 0.71 along with Ace some both players. You know, not really doing too much. So I just. I'd, sorry to cut you off. I just no. want to reiterate. I'm not calling Asim bad. I'm just saying they this team needed a two man change. Asim coming in was not going to make them like. I'm not trying to say better. I'm just saying they needed a two man change for Asim to have a bigger impact. Oh, I fully, I, yeah, fully agree. Again, I thought, I thought, Asim Capsidal would have been a much better duo, and I think people can finally understand why I say that. Because that duo would actually make much more sense on these maps in the game and on paper, legitimately, if you just look at play styles. Um, I think Boston, I think Asim is going to be a better land player, so we can give that some credit too. Um, I hope Asim, when he gets to land, he typically is a better player, so I hope it, it, you see him shine a bit more. Slasher is definitely a land player, so hopefully that whole squad is just shining. And Snoopy's play style, unpredictable, snappy, and, and likelihood could work on could work better on land because people don't expect it as much when you do these kind of these rogue plays and stuff. Um, I don't see it going too well, but I'm hopeful that this squad could turn it around going into major two and hopefully make a little bit of noise. Um, depending on where they fall in the standings with major two and who they're going to end up playing in round one, or they you know they could actually let's take a look at the standings as well. I kind of look at this as well too because. Where, they're still looking all right for a winner's bracket spot. Like it's, it's very interesting, you know, though. So I want to bring They're going to play a good team first round of winners. Like They're going to play a New York or an Optic or a FaZe or something like that round well, one. Of- well, let me, let, me, let me put forth the kind of in- super interesting part about what happens here. There's a chance if Minnesota can beat Heretics next week and Boston lose to Seattle that it would become a three-way tie between Minnesota, Boston, and Carolina. In that regard, Boston and Minnesota would make winner's bracket. So it's actually a very weird, even though you know Minnesota starts off 0-5, and five, there's actually a chance uh, that... Rupert can still make it. I mean, they, it's kind of unlikely, though, because I think they play FaZe or something. No, they don't. They play, they play Heretics. Rocker? Yeah, Rocker play Heretics next week. And that's for a, a oh, pretty no, much... Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's someone who plays FaZe that has a tough has a tough time. Nah, I don't. I think you're incorrect. I no, think. you're right. It's yeah. not Rocker, but somebody does. No, and then Breach Whoever play Carolina. Or be Thieves, actually. Yeah, or be, Breach... Sorry, it's Carolina. Breach play Surge. So Surge, both those teams, Rocker are fighting for a winner spot. But Rocker depends on 
Boston losing. If Boston wins, they lock automatically. And then it becomes a tie between uh, between Carolina and and uh, Rocker. But then Rocker wins that, I believe, in, the, in that head-to-head. But Rocker doesn't win the head-to-head with Boston. So it's a very weird standings going to Major 2. And the unlikelihood of Rocker getting to winner's bracket and Boston getting kicked out of winner's bracket is all... All in the jump. Let's be real though, like number seven, number eight seed, you might as well be starting in losers because you're getting slammed round one by the top team. So like, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, bro. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me kind of put another th- a caveat to this. Watch, if what I said happens, right? If Minnesota wins, Boston loses. Minnesota gets eight spot. If New York wins next yeah, week, and then we sh- get a we get a replay of subliners versus Rocker round one. Yeah, so Rocker goes straight into loser bracket, just like we said. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly think the top teams are coming differently. I don't know, bro. I, I think it gets. I, I think like, it's real interesting. We shall see. We listen, shall see. listen. Rocker have beat one team this this split, and it's been surge. But listen, but okay, but when it comes to okay, land, we all know lands different, and also who have they put up the biggest fight against? New York, Optic. If actually screw Rocker, anyone. If you're if you're Seattle, Rocker, Ravens, Breach, Legion, any of them. Who would you rather play? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, for who, sure. They're one and six. Ra- round one. Who would you rather play? New York, Optic, Phase, or Ultra? Who out of those four? Who would you rather play round one? I'm looking at who I'm playing in losers, to be honest. Nah, <laughs> I'm, I'm picking Optic, Optic or New York. That's who I'm picking as my top I'd two. I'd much prefer to play Optic because I always think they're vulnerable. Yes, I, I think Optic or New York are your top two to who you want to play when it comes to LAN. because you have a chance. Then you have somewhat of a chance. I think Phase and Ultra on LAN are just unbelievable demons so it's just crazy like i said this was my point rocker had the chance to be the top four team and they just lost out due to them choking horrendously and they're just not going to be the same team and after this they'll make a change let's talk about phase because phase they are showing what it's like right now to be a top team there we go as far as i'm concerned yeah these boys are playing on a different level it's interesting right because after before major one the talk was well the game's right now lots of after Major 1 happens, the game changes. Certain players, such as Ultra, they don't like it so much. And I think that maybe is a contributing factor to what we're going to discuss when we get to the Ultra series. But FaZe is still proving that there is a serious skill gap in the game right now. Like, sure, there might be some inconsistency. Bloody hell. They made these teams look amateur this week. And I also thought that FaZe made quite the statement to Optic, to be fair, because after Optic struggled through against Boston, FaZe just... Completely blew them off the face of the planet, and there was just no doubt. And FaZe are doing this in like every series they play right now. So to me, FaZe are an absolute lock for the grand finals. I feel so sorry for anyone that has to play FaZe after the FaZe lose. Like FaZe oh, lost to so FaZe lost to New York, and then it's just been three no, three no, three no, three no. They don't. <laughs> that th- this is a team that does not go on consecutive losing sprees. If they lose once, they come back 10 times, million times better. And I feel so sorry for anyone that has to come against them. If you're the team that beats them, congratulations, because you don't have to go against what they got. Every time they lose, they come back and absolutely tut everyone. They've won 12 maps in a row since that loss. And if they, if they beat, if they 3 0 LAG, or if they even got LAG or Turtle, they break the record for maps one in a row. And people are saying, oh, FaZe always do this online. They do this online in Cold War. They didn't do this online the last couple of years. This is some Cold War level shit from FaZe. Yeah. I um, mean, let's also know, they're, they're, they're always grand finalists, though. That's what everyone says. Like, oh, they do it until grand final. But I'm not being funny. Your favorite team can't do it. So. Well, uh, interesting stat line. That I just, I wanted to confirm, though. But as of this last week, NYSL and FaZe are the only two teams in the league that every player's KD for Major 2 is above a 1.1. That's crazy. Above a 1.1 across the absurd, board, actually. top to no, bottom? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy, actually. You <laughs> are piss-slamming everybody at that point. And I got to tip it to both teams, right? The lowest KD on, on NYSL is Sib at a 1.11. Lowest KD on FaZe is Simp at a 1.11. So... Unbelievable. If Sims players. if Sims should lowest KD player as well, like you've got to be fucking bricking it. You like, gotta so be. If you look at the control stats for this team, this stage, the top three control KDs in the league this stage are Cell, Draz, and Abizi. Jesus. And Simp isn't even there. So it's like Simp, who's like just an absurd control player, 
is not even in the top three control players in the game right now, but they're all phase players. It's like, holy shit, what are you meant to do? Yeah, bro, even the, over and, the overalls are crazy as well, right? The lowest KD they have on their team overall the whole year is 1.04 Abizi. That's the worst KD on the team. To, to people in the chat that said, like, uh, I'm talking to Wo10, who says, is that not a fair... Is that not fair criticism for saying they need to do it at a tournament? It's not like they've gone to the tournaments and get pissed on. Like, they go there and get a minimum second. Like, they are translating it into the tournaments. They just don't... They just don't win the finals, which is essentially where FaZe want to be, really. If we're talking... Like, they don't want to be second. They want to win. Which is a disappointment to them. But... We've got to look at it like they are consistently good online and on LAN. They, whatever they do online, they translate to LAN too. Like, let's not make out they go 6 and 0, 7 and 0, and then come dead last. You know, that, that's what New York done major one. Um, and, then everyone, and then everyone was roasting them and out of rule online. And so, uh, thank you. FaZe have been doing this. Yeah, if they don't win the event, yeah, it's disappointing. Like you said, if you're not winning, you're losing. And that, that's how they see it too. But they are translating their online performances to land performances, and they have been for years. Right, if they lose this event, it's like, what do we even say at this point? But I think FaZe, yeah. to me, I mean, I'm, I'm taking them to win this event. The way they've played lately. The other reason is that I think FaZe are almost a guarantee for the Whereas I don't know what team they would play. Like, I think... Any of New York, Optic, and Ultra can feasibly be in the finals, but I think FaZe are there for sure with the way they've played lately, um, which means that even if FaZe will lose the vast majority of the reasons we've discussed in previous weeks, they're still the most likely team to win the event. Uh, FaZe, FaZe, by far, are the team that's improved the most from the last major to now. And on top of that, the addition of Rio to the map pool, I think expanded their dominance even more. Because now you, your map pool's, you know, it's more open. You can't veto out a certain map and now only have two maps. You have a third map to choose from. I think them on Rio, disgusting. Them on 95% of the maps is just so so good where teams now are not so limited in, into what they can choose after vetoes. I think the opening up of the map pool lets FaZe be good on every map, whereas, you know, there, you've seen some, some flaws in the game of Toronto on different maps now. You've seen some flaws of the game on Optic on different maps. Once they've started to expand their map pool toward this last couple of weeks of qualifiers, you've seen a little bit here the flaws of a lot of teams. The only team that hasn't been exposed, no matter what, has been FaZe. They've just been frying across get, every map, every mode, I, whatever it may be. They got exposed by one team, but like it was it's a good team. And it's not like when you look at it, it's like an upset. It's a it's literally their other side rivals, you know, the ones that are also on you know on on that track too so yeah they definitely got exposed by one team but like the point is they don't let it affect them and by exposed they didn't get three nil it was a close game you know whatever happened whatever happened yeah series to um, five, series to five right it wasn't yeah it wasn't yeah and, and and my my point is is that you know teams speak about you know it, it's not like phase lost to you know an lag or is an, it was an upset like it's an upset to phase but it's still a really fucking good team like a team that can win an event um I, 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 it's like you said they don't have a flaw which is true now they don't like they're not losing s and d's like toronto are they're not you know they're not losing controls like optic are you know they don't have a flaw right now apart from you know after that after that my series you can't fault them on anything and <laughs> that to me is scary. I think, and I mean, especially when, especially when Sims, your lowest performer as well, the guy who can just switch it on like that, that's even scarier. Yeah, I think, I think with them from this, from this New York map set, I think they just learned what maps they don't want to play. To be honest, I think it's more just like let's not play high rise search and destroy. Let's just not do that because for them, you know, they don't tend to do too well on it. I mean, go look at their map stats for major two, right? Map stats for S and D. Well, I think they've been pretty good at it, but like clearly New York just hard counted them there. Um, well, they're, they're actually they've won across the board on all maps on S and D for Major Two. The only two they haven't won are they've lost the high rise, they lost an invasion control, they haven't lost once, and they've only lost a skid row and a sub base. So the two pretty cheese maps, skid row and sub base, have been their hard point losses. Karachi, Rio, and invasion, unbeaten. So I think Phase are the team to beat. I'm gonna agree with you guys that they're the favorites to win this major. 
um, in this, you know, in this patch of the game, they look the best. They look the most improved. And I mean, it's 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 gonna be tough. I think Toronto, yeah, Toronto have lost full. Optics still have their flaws. They look inconsistent at times, right? Against Boston, two three, but then they come out and, and slam the next series. So it's Faze are the only ones that look super dominant across the board, and have taken even their loss was a a two three, you know, lopsided. They destroy them in the hard point, get six out in search and destroy. It's a very lopsided series overall. So yeah, now Faze look like the I best think team. I, I think it speaks volumes though for Optic. You know, they're still they're still moving and grooving. And it shows that they've got a bit of ice, you know, regardless, they're not doing what FaZe is doing. They're still showing up in the, in the S&Ds. They're still, you know, clutching up when they need to, which is good to see. It doesn't like a win's a win at the end of the day. You know, it's the same way I say to you, Ace, you know, it don't matter if you lose 3-2, you're still lost. You know, yeah. winning 3-2, they, don't, they just don't look as clean as FaZe, but a win's a win and they're showing some ice, whereas FaZe are just showing dominance. So... You know, take it with a pinch of salt. You know, phase phase looked more dominant, and they're the, they're the team to beat going into it. And then you got Optic, New York, and you know Toronto. I think Toronto, like you said, have just lost full. I think this new update has really you know pissed them off, and I I think it's showing in terms of like the way they act too. Um, you know, Scrappy tweeted, "Was it GG's Optic?" those guys are really good and everyone's like oh he's giving them credit no if you guys can't read sarcasm that was the most sarcastic tweet i've ever read in my life uh, yeah. like i couldn't this, believe this, the replies trey like people uh, like oh uh, you know hubble so trap, positive yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. scrappy scrappy's a humble king scrappy he did not say, you talk about <laughs> scrappy one of the most disrespectful players in terms of like um respecting other teams when he beats them and you expect Scrappy to come out and say, "GG's optic. Those guys are really good, man. You guys are fucking fake. Especially when it's quite clear they just straight ego child them in the vetoes again. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. uh, you know. And Scrappy's got a good side. Like Scrappy's got good humor too. You know, he he's not sat there like, bro, we just got outplayed. He is not saying that, really bro. Good. Yeah, no way. I know. It's really oh, interesting. I, like, I will you. say on, on optic, like I feel that they play up and down to their competition i don't know if it's one player specifically but pred definitely has this trait and i think optic really over the last couple of years they always do tend to show out like they really take it when they play online it's a good should we, should we, jump, to, should we jump to optic now bad teams but um i mean yeah we can discuss this series i guess this optic ultra series yeah, in general it's natural. Right? We're because, right now. let's go to it right now because it, this yeah, is yeah, a I'm really gonna... telling series um pred had a great series here that's what you want to see out of Optic, but it's more interesting on the Toronto side as to where exactly they go from here, because whatever they might think inside their own heads about how, well, we've just played maps that the other teams like, and if we win, then we win, but they're expected to win, and it's this weird like mental trickery they're playing on themselves. All it takes is for Ultra to play against Optic or FaZe or New York at the Major and get slammed through, and immediately this mental facade they've built up collapses, and they think, hang on a second, are we actually shit now? Or they recognize that they have fallen off somewhat. Now, I'm not going to lie. They played still very well in the hard points here. And Scrappy was uh, dominant force on the Rio. But getting Nezloed like this, this is the most dominant Nezlo of all time, no? Have we ever it's seen... the greatest Nezlo of all time. Yeah, and Pred was gutted when they didn't close it out with the 6 0 6 like Yeah, his reaction was like he lost the game. Yeah, it was so <laughs> funny. I was just like, Optics S&D map pool, I'm not going to all of a sudden magically say it's good. Because Optic, we know they're good at Karachi, but so are Ultra. Very impressive to be Ultra in this world in Karachi. And the Terminal is a map that Ultra just don't play. Like, I don't know. Maybe they're thinking we've got to try it in the map pool because Skid Row's gone and we're shit at some other things. But Ultra didn't even lose a search in the entirety of Major 1 at the event in Boston. They lost no searches. They barely won a round in this series. So, you know, there's obviously been a level of regression. Other teams have progressed. But it makes the league interesting because Ultra were miles at a major one. I think, like everybody I th knew that. I think to test your map pool, if that's what they're doing, which I truly don't believe they're doing, by the way. I, I, I just don't believe it. To test your map pool against FaZe and then Optic, like, they, they, they've been on the ghosty pack. Like, <laughs> like, you don't test it against the best teams in the game. You just don't. Because now they've just lost to FaZe and Optic. And let's be real, no one wants to lose to Optic. 
And there's not a soul on the band. You think Scrappy wants to lose to Optic? Of all people, absolutely not. Like, they they're not testing map pools. I, I I truly believe that they they you know they look good in scrims in it or something like that. And uh, you know they're confident on it. Would I have played Optic on on Terminal? Probably not. But you know I'm not in their scrims. I'm not in their cool. I'm not going. What's going on right? You know I don't know what's going on over there. Um, but I don't think they're testing maps at all. I just think you know like you said they're dominant in hardpoint. Their respawn their, their hardpoints look good. Yeah. But. Six nailed on your best map. Six nailed on you on one of your best S and D maps. That's that's telling. If I'm if I'm Toronto from this series, um, I'm not panicking, only because you won the hard points in pretty pretty decent fashion. Like they didn't look too in the Rio scrap. Like we said, was show, showing out. He was sh shooting shitting on these guys in the Rio um, Skid Row. All should look like the better team. They've looked like a great team on Skid Row. Being able to break P2 is like it's bread and butter for them. Getting 6 0 the way they did it in two S&Ds is not going to happen consistently, in my opinion. I think it's one of those things where you look at it, it's almost laughable. So that's why I think that sarcastic tweet that Scrap has is fine, only because it's laughable when you get 12 to 1 in search. You kind of, like we talk, we've talked about it before, you just kind of laugh it off and be like, damn, guys, we got nestled hella bad that series. And just keep, that's it. You don't look at the series too much and be like, oh my God, our S&D is chalked. What do we do? I don't think that's how they reacted to it at all. Envoy also with a pretty sh shit series overall. Um, yeah, I, I think Toronto aren't overreacting at this. The fact that they won the two hard points, to me, is actually a scarier sign for Optic then it is then like i think it's more of a worrisome sign for optic in my head because in the pred interview after the series i believe he said he's like oh no he did say he said our hard points are where we're strong at or it may have it may have been shotzi on the watch party i know i was watching the scump watch party from who said this but he's like yeah our, our hard points are our strong suit we've been working on s d though so if hard points your strong suit but you got dominated versus toronto in both of these and then in more of the cheese maps, like your S and Ds, where it's just like you know they could be willy nilly bullshitting online. You six zero the best team in the game. I don't know. I'm not convinced. It's a good series. Shotzi was showing out, of course. You know he looked like a superstar as much as Pat doesn't <laughs> want to say so. I'm concerned for Optics hard point, and if they have a legitimate chance to beat Toronto when it comes to LAN because of the hard point hard points of this series. I mean, I would have the opposite perspective of how Optic. Like, I'm looking at this thinking, well, we lost both hard points to Toronto. That's not going to happen again. I reckon that's how their mentality is in the series. Also, if they're saying their the best, if they if they're is. saying that, if they're saying hard point is their best game mode, and they've lost two hard points and took a control and two S and Ds off Ultra, I'm going into the major with a fucking with a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being like, if I'm being real with you, if I if I go into a major, uh, if I just beat Ultra and I think our best. Our best game mode is hard point. And I lose two hard points. I'm laughing. Interesting. I think Why? for Toronto, right? The, in, the What I'm looking for with Ultra, if they lose winners round one, it's going to be spectacular in, in many ways. Because if you look at the standings, Ace, just the way that it works again for Major 2 at the moment... Ultra are currently the fourth seed. They're quite likely to finish there after losing their couple of games in a row. Probably going to be the fourth seed for the major. They'll play the fifth seeded team, which of course is best of the rest team. In theory, the most likely upset team. And you look at this right now. If you're New York or if you're Optic, one of those teams is going to be 7-0. They will play Ravens or Surge or some dog shit team, right? That they're going to beat. Whereas if you're Ultra, you're going to play... The potential upset team like thieves yes they got slammed by phase but we'll discuss their vegas series in a second and look, look i think if you're toronto you're still confident you're going to beat thieves obviously but it's not the game you want to play and also the seeding carries some degree of weight right like as the season as the tournament progresses if you're the number four seed when you play phase or whoever when you play the number one seed they get to choose where they go with the Vitas, right? Like, they're the team that gets to choose Team A or Team B. And maybe that's a small advantage, but that's nonetheless an advantage. Like, you want to be the number one seed. These online matches are important. And also, seeding for champs is important. 
You want every 10 points you can get. No, because when it gets to the World Championship, the number one seed gets the best possible first round matchup. So, yeah, I think if Toronto aren't taking these matches as seriously as they should be, they need to change their mindset because they matter more than Toronto seem to think that they matter. I'm, I'm in the camp of conspiracy here. I'm going to throw a conspiracy point out. If I'm Toronto, I'd rather be fourth or third and play LAT or Legion on land. Maybe not Legion, but LAT or Boston, one of those guys. I'd rather play them than play, um, you know, a Carolina team that's randomly upset. They, you know, they upset people, they upset NYSL at Major 1, and then a Rocker team potentially that could upset you on land as well. Um, maybe they're, they're trying to test out, test out some maps and not be in the first or second seed. Maybe third or fourth seed is a little better for them overall. Conspiracy. This is full conspiracy. This could be yap. This is pure yap. Second part that's not Yap was what I was talking about Trey in last week's show, that playing the best teams on different maps and taking their strats, I think is a good idea. I think it's a, a valid idea by Toronto, expanding the map pool, seeing how other teams play certain maps. Yes, you scrim them, but how they play it on, you know, on actual match day is different. So I think it's actually good. Toronto's going to come into the major more prepared than a lot of other teams are. Oh, what do you think about this one, Trey? Because I will say quickly. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna straight up say this right now. This did not happen. If this happened, Scrappy would not have went after Draza and his girl. That's facts. If they were just testing their map pool, he would not have cared about losing. Done and dusted. I'm not. You would not have got. If, 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 if you are not, if, if you are testing maps, you are not angry when you lose. I don't know. I think I think he was just angry about how Draza decided to address it rather than winning or losing. I think the win and the losing was irrelevant. I think they lost, and then Dra how Draza went about it in, in the interview and stuff like that. I think that's what made him tweak a certain way. But no, because because if like my point is, yeah, Scrappy would have just tweeted, "GG's phase decided to test the map pool didn't work out in our favor." Instead, went full rogue, and then against Optic, <laughs> and then against Optic, who you never want to lose to if you're scrappy, then tweets, GG's, those guys are good. Those guys are real good. Not those guys are good. Those guys are real good. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still, I'm still up in the air about, about the decision-making on the Toronto squad. The major squad. will tell all. The major, actually, the Toronto, major they play uh, Thieves, don't they, next week? Uh, bear in mind, bear in mind, bear in mind, sorry. I, I played, I was... I played on the same team as their coach, Mr. Joe Pennington. Fair enough. Of course. Me and Joe Pennington were not testing maps against fucking top teams. We're testing maps against the bums. <laughs> here's the thing, though. Here's, here's the thing when it comes to all this, though. Toronto does play LAT next week, so it should be... I think LAT are going to be, be really... a preview. That could be a nice little preview. Yeah, right? it could be a preview of the actual matchup we see. Toronto at, lost two series in a row. I know against good teams, but... This is the first time Toronto have lost consecutive series for 10 months. Now, I know 10 months is actually not even that far back because the schedule is terrible. But you know what I mean? Like, I think it was May last year was the last time they lost two consecutive series. Yeah. Um, something interesting, is... too. Something interesting about this, this LAT series or against them. If LAT beat them, then they, they're tied at that point. And if they beat them in the head-to-head, -head, that means LAT would go to fourth, which is mind-blowing to think about that Toronto would be go fifth in this major and LAT would actually take the higher seed. They would still play each other unless, here's the weird part, Legion actually have two matches left. They have Seattle and Carolina. So there's actually... Yeah, I'm really hoping that Legion could do something here. Legion they has a chance to go to fourth. To, right? Yeah, they have a chance to go to fourth, yeah. push Toronto to fifth, and even push, at that point, they could push LAT, depending on what happens that match, to sixth. So we either see Legion, potential, this is the potential, Legion versus Toronto at fourth, at fourth versus fifth, or we see Legion versus, uh, we see Legion versus LAT for winners, which is so weird. How could that even, how does it LAT versus Legion for a winner's spot? It actually gets really absurd with right after this week of matches. I don't know. I think this week of matches is going to be insane. And it's going to, how these standings actually end up for Major 2 and who ends up in winners is not, is just going to be kind of mind-blowing compared to the last couple of weeks where we thought everyone was going to land.
I think it's just going to be kind of absurd. Um, jumping ahead. And let's though, not forget that Ultra Legion series when they played. It's pretty fire. Like it went game four, nearly went game five. So yeah, I don't know. Jumping ahead. I'm actually though, really looking forward to Thieves Ultra next week. Jumping ahead to. Let's go. Where you guys want to go? Rocker, Gorillas. Uh, I want to say, oh, you want me to be real? You want me to be real? I want to stay away from the LAG series against New York. I want to we stay away from. I want to stay away from the Minnesota and Seattle game because fuck me, that Boy was. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I would love to talk. Got to win. Well done. Ten points. We can. Uh, yeah, we no. I I would love to talk <laughs> about LAT. Uh, LAT Vegas and Miami Ravens. Yeah, to yeah. I, I'm happy with games. that. All right. Yeah, that now, was a, that was a decent series. Yeah. Now listen, I th was I the only one that predicted LAT to win that one? Uh, it was you and someone else. I think two, two guys. Maybe Paris. No, no, I, th I, I think Ben changed his answer at the last one too. I think I was the only one. Nah, that was uh, no apparently I'm pretty ben, sure. Yeah, apparently Ben folded. Yeah, he folded. Ben, like cha ben changed his answer in the last one. I was the only person, just like you, Ace, to predict the one off. Now, everyone called me faded, and here's why I was not. LA Thieves were getting better. Uh, Vegas had a break. Um, they, had a, they had a break. And obviously, I think Vegas have a lot, you know, depending on them in terms of like confidence wise and stuff like that. They feel like they've got a lot riding them. A lot of people in the league like their team. And I, if you want me to be real, I, I, they asked me why did I change in the, in, the, uh, in the prediction chat. I said, my boys don't lose to Paris. My boys don't lose to the Legion. My boys don't lose to Vegas. We're talking nasty and Afro. They ain't losing to no, ain't losing to no Vegas Legion. Worst KDs on the team. Continue. Yeah, respectfully, but they're still losing to those. And also matchups exist in COD. I'll, I'll be the one to say this. Matchups do exist in COD. Yeah. Um, you know, we had numerous amount of situations where, you know, the first team, you know, the second team couldn't beat the first team and the third team could beat the first team and stuff like that. It happens. That's matchups in COD. Um, but just like that, you know, you bring it up. Uh, I also think, you know, attaches, you know, KD in this is, you know, for a map one of 250 to 204, you know, finishing with a 2.36, a 1.67, and a 1.42. <laughs> Yeah, that one was a that is the that is the biggest kill whore esque game I've seen out of three players in my fucking I think, life. I think it's both ways though, because genuinely thieves actually had good teamwork here. I know that I forgot shit on, but genuinely they actually traded each other, which is rare for a team that isn't in the top four. So I was quite impressed. Like I thought thieves made some good. So even watching game one, like oh, is it touch really just killer his nutsack off? <laughs> which. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's a bit of that, but I, I want to give thieves more credit here than a, I take a, 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 a bit of that. <laughs> there's a bit of a, that. Bit, a bit. There might, have, there might have been a bit of that. Guy. He had a two point three six God, and one by he won to a two. He got a two point three six and one by forty six points against a team that had zero point five, zero point six one, zero point nine six, and zero point six one. And you think there was a little bit of kill horror in there? invasion it's invasion though plus you, you, you it, even his map three is good his map four is good so i don't know maybe for one map yeah sure but you gotta give no i'm talking the whole team oh talking okay team. all across the board you're saying yeah oh yeah I, I'm, I'm talking all across the board like la thieves clearly had better teamwork in that hard point they just lost because they didn't have enough kills you're right rab they had good teamwork and it's clearly proven because there's they all got fucking piss slammed they, they outslayed and... by fewer kills in maps two, three, four than they got outslayed by map one. But yet they won maps two, three, four comfortably, even though their total kill death across those three maps was not as bad as they got slammed map one. So like that's just yeah. Yeah, I mean, and people, so people saying Afro got slammed. You know, he had a good S and D map two, eleven and six. His S and D has been unreal. He's one of the best his, his, in the game right now. Yeah. Genuinely. His map one is map one, fourteen and twenty eight. Map three, twenty twenty, uh, twenty seven and twenty seven, and his map four, you know, negative. But they win the map by eighty points on a Rio. Like, yeah, his NKD doesn't look great. If I was going to do what we do with a, a lot of people, uh, he would probably be sat on a neutral, maybe just like a zero point nine eight, zero point nine seven. 
if we were going to do what we done, Ace. Yeah, yeah I'm 54. Um, he's 50, if I take out the map one, he goes 54. I thought we'd take out map and... one, three, and four, and we just look at the search. That's, that's so <laughs> eight. <laughs> but like, but like my, my, my point is, he got put in an absolute blender, and they still managed to win, and he still managed, a, after a first map like that, he still managed to do well. Um, and I'm not going to take away the fact that he isn't hasn't been playing well. Like, I'm, I'm, no, there's no bias from me. In the blunt, bro. I'm actually there's a, there's no bias from me guys i have literally said this team was the worst l team in the game and you know afro had like one more shot if you guys you know watch previous episodes i've literally ridiculed this team before nasty joined them i just think nasty joining them has made the team better um and afro literally has probably this major to prove that he deserves to be on the team or we see joe deceives and uh you gotta if we're giving credit Attach definitely deserves better. Uh, free attach for sure. Um, but realistically, this guy, this guy purge is good. He's he's hitting form a little bit. But if he can't perform a major two, I think LAN is for Legion is a big deal, right? If you're if you're not able to perform on on, on LAN, you have excuses online. We're not in the same place. We don't have facility. My internet at home is slow. Whatever X Y and Z, you have excuses online. No problem. But at LAN. If Purge is there dropping the worst KD in, in goddamn CDL history, basically, um, again, then a consideration needs to be made because he's not, he, maybe he has some comms and he calls some strats out, but that's not worth the lack of slaying ability that comes out of him and the need of attached to carry plus 32. Plus 32, I think, is probably the highest differential in a loss. I wonder if any stats guys could help me out with that, but is a plus 32 the highest? Plus, no, nah, there's definitely been more in a loss. In a definitely loss, be, yeah, no, there's definitely been more. Hundred percent. Wake's definitely been a part. Oh, of one I was of those. about to say Wake. Yeah, de de wait, 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 Wake's definitely been a part of one of those. Hundred percent. Very, cu uh, very just curious. To, just, yeah. Just, to, just to clarify on our, our, our numbers, Ace. If you know Afro got horrendously spawn trapped in the map one, he finishes with a 0 0.98. If if you take out map one, yeah. Okay. I, again, I like the cheese of there that. There we go. Another quality. I, 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 <laughs> I like know, it, no, it, it's, it's, it's cheesy, but like, but like we, you know, if you take out the whole team getting shit slammed, he had a decent series. Wait, what is that? Mm -hmm. 83 yeah, like minutes. Like the, like the whole, I'm pretty sure I'm right. He finished 50, 54 and 55. Oh, yeah, 54 and 55. Um, yeah, so he'd have a 0.98. Yeah. So again, that first, that first map where Dylan Attach is fucking... 2.63 geo 1.67 yeah the, well, they started out slow clearly and got shit on besides that afro had a good series and if now, if, if you're I the say, if you're the reason you're winning an S &D, I just want to add this if afro is the reason you're winning an S &D, there's two S &Ds in a series who cares if he gives you he gives you nothing map 1 if he's winning your map 2 and map 5 for you that's a reason why he's on the team and he's valuable to the structure now, of that team i will say this he has to have more damage it, it's it, it he used to be the lowest damage dealer on our team in london and this is facts by the way this is all facts you can go look it up he was he, he had the lowest damage in majority series when we was in london i don't know whether he just waits to shoot people like to get to where he gets a guaranteed kill but he needs to start laying down some more bullets you know you know it's kind of interesting about afro too a lot of people when they this is kind of the funniness about cod fans right cod fans say i'm faded they're wrong Cod's fans say Afro is a fast sub. They're actually wrong. They he's just, not. Yeah, yeah. He's they, not. They, they watch his pov, and yes, he's snappy. He's cracked. I'll give you that. But Afro's actually the polar opposite of a fast sub. He's a very slow, methodical sub. That he's a simp and pred pace player. So I would maybe I would I'll give him slower than that. I would honestly give him a bit slower than that. He clearly, if you watch Afro play, he does bait sometimes, but he's not like. He's not your. He's not gonna be the guy who's running and gunning and a hook type of player, a shotsy type of player. He's completely different. I think he has a. a Af go ahead. Afro is forty six in damage per ten. Damn. 46. Can so, yo yo to 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 Can you tell me who's lower than him? There's only two players that can be lower than him, right? <laughs> God RX, maybe. It's no, gonna, yeah, I'm like, like low key, it's gonna be God RX. He's he's probably league. maybe purge. I'm gonna and and and, purge. and and that's and that's my point. Like it was the same on thingy. I don't know what he does. Slasher? Slasher's low is crazy, what? actually. That's pretty wow. Slasher and Purge? One more. Slasher and Purge? Wow. Boy, my eyes have been open. I'm out. Let's go. I gotta go back <laughs> to the Boston wild. Breach page really quick. What is happening over there? It also depends a bit on like how 
I don't know what maps they'd like to play, and also the fact that they have been getting piss slammed in hardpoint, which is like yeah, for sure. But there's damage, uh, my, 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 my point. My point. Yeah. My, my point is, is that yeah, no hardpoints where you get mostly damage, but the fact that you know, let's look at this for example. Um, you know, nasty has two less kills than Afro and two thousand six hundred damage less. Yeah, uh, more. Sorry, more. He has two less kills and two. From Afro. He has the lowest and... hardpoint damage per ten in the league below Godrex and Purge. Typical. He's not, yeah. he's not giving and you that's... hardpoint. That's basically what you have to get from him. And, uh, and my point is, is it's not that he's not giving you shit in hardpoint Ace. He's not giving you. He's not even making people weak. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Why are you saying no to me? That's like I said. He's not giving. No, you no, shit. no, 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 no. Exactly I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, like, like he's <laughs> there's, there's giving you shit and there's giving you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like shit is still something. No, nothing is nothing. I. But if we take out the maps where he did bad, then actually he had good. Yeah, no. If we take out the hard point, if we if we take if we take if we take out the S and if we take out and just give him the S and D, he's probably got the best damage in the league. Yeah, <laughs> so you gotta say. I mean, you know, but you are right. He is performing in S and D. But if he can't perform in hard point, something has to change because hard point is. You know, that's a confidence booster going into map one. And if you're down, you know, 2 1 and Afro has won you an SD, you ain't looking at him to win the fourth map, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also agree to one, one, one last point, too, is that Kremp also dropping 1.21. It's good to finally see him turn it around because there's a couple of weeks, several weeks where he was getting slammed. Like, worse. this is his first, like, real series where he showed why they actually picked him up. Because exactly. until this point, like, he was doing nothing. Yeah, he was... 18k damage to 200 more than attached with six less kills. Very, very good. Yeah, impressive stuff out of him this series and definitely a reason why they were... Definitely a reason why they even kept it close map one and then won the series overall. So, yeah, good good stuff from Kremp. Legion really need to step it up for this. You know, let's see who uh, LA Thieves play only... Oh, they have two matches left. They have Gorillas and Ultra. Toronto and Ultra, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah Gorillas is an know, interesting crowd. I mean... <laughs> Uh, so let's see. say, and most and most likely they go one and one, and then in the standings they end up, right? They end up three and four. Would it be? Uh, they end up with forty points. If they go one and one, they end up with forty points. Um, oh. but Legion, well, like we said, three wins. Damn. Yeah, Legion is 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 actually more interesting because they have Seattle and Carolina. So by just the current standings, Legion should actually go higher and have a better better placing then Thieves and be tied with Toronto. So it gets so weird. Oh, man, this major two... I mean, I thought that Legion Thieves series is pretty 50-50. Like, you know, based on... Like, I was in the lead of the points predictions or whatever, so I just wanted to go with the favorites until I had a bit of an interesting perspective. Obviously, Trey needs to do some catch-up work. But, you know, that ain't his fault. But I will say... <laughs> The fuck? Why would you roast the... me? I wasn't a side lead. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But like, I'm like three points behind someone. That's embarrassing. Looking at but, you, pal. Yeah, and I think Zidio Pal might have to retire for this. If we... But Vegas, like, at the end of the day, it's a series you can lose. Theoretically, if you'd have said to them, you play Thieves, you play Ravens, you play Surge, you're going to get two wins out of the three. They'd probably say, yeah. Now, they haven't got any of those two wins. But if they were to deliver on those two wins, it does make things kind of nice. And I think they will be favored to do so, especially with the way that Ravens looked up against uh, Trey's favorite team in the other game of the Sunday. What, you want to talk about that? I think we have to, unfortunately. All right, I let's mean, hop over I want, to... I uh... want to get my piece in as well. All right, here we go. We got Carolina versus yeah. Miami. Miami picking up their first win. Uh, this is definitely going to be one for the boys because we got strong opinions of Rab and Trey about both these teams. So uh, right, whoever listen, wants to get off, bro. go ahead. Bro, some bro, I've been getting tweeted so much, bro. Like the Spanish fans, they're coming at your neck. Nah, not even that, bro. There's just, just people that think I'm a big hater of Miami. I'm not. Please don't think I am. I just don't think the way they play COD works. Now, I know I rooted against them, but I really did want to root. Like I really did want to root for them, but just based on the fact that I have my bias and like they are, they were zero and five. I thought, you know what? Like it makes sense. And Clay doesn't pretend like Clay doesn't usually lo uh, lose to European players like this, so I was basing around that fact. But let let's you know let me gas them up the way I put them down. I'll gas them up. They played good against Carolina, who I know Rab has a lot of opinions on 
the other team on Carolina. They they're not the greatest team, but this is a good series for for Heretics. They absolutely you know slammed them in the fourth map, and it's nice to see. And you know, remember when I said to you guys that they just look deflated, they look upset whenever they play. They actually were screaming and shouting and looking like they wanted to play together. Like we got Vickle that doesn't look upset or unhappy that he's there. He was actually screaming vamos or whatever they say in Spanish. I don't know. Their fucking listenings are crazy. But they actually look like they wanted to be there and play. So shout out to those boys. I'm not going to sit here and roast you guys. You guys won. I still think the way you guys... I still think the way that's played COD isn't the greatest, but it worked in this series. And just like I said, what? when did I say vamos works? You all finish positive. Every single time, you always finish positive. All four of them finish positive. Vamanos Cod. Sometimes you go, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. So shout out to them for winning. Congratulations on your 10 CDO points. I actually hope you come out and fry the major so you can guys can talk shit to me because I love, I, I love the game. I love this Look, game. I still think you're kind of right though, Trey, because they won the first two maps comfortably and then they just got 3 0 piss slammed by Ravens on high rise control. Like, Who are the worst control team in the game? Which is telling me that ain't like some degree of inconsistency. And then they come out and slam them back on some base. It's just, I, I agree with Trace Objective generally on Spanish card. But you've got to recognize that this is what happens. Sometimes they just come out and fry. It's just yeah, that's it my is. point. You know, they're what they won, they're, they're what they won in five. Maybe they Ravens have got a bit better at high rose control lately, but they, a few <laughs> weeks ago, Ravens were the worst high rose control team I've ever They're seen. They're one in five. five. Vamanos has worked one out of five times. Like, <laughs> Vamanos Cod has worked one out of five times. Like, it's, Vamanos, it's, yeah. it's, it's here. It's uh, proof in the pudding. But, like I said, I hope they go to the major and actually fry because I, I like watching it happen. Rav, are you going to cook what I think no, you're I can cook? go. I can go. All I right. can go. Go cook them, please. <sighs> Look, there is. There is one number on this scoreboard <laughs> that don't look especially pretty, right? And I gotta say, Los Angeles Grillers, Fellow and Clay both went positive against against those boys. This one, not quite the same story, right? We've talked about Felony. I like Fellow. I think he's a great guy. But bloody hell, these online matches have been rough. <laughs> Starting out even before Major One, it was bad. It got a bit better in Major 2. 0.6, 43 kills. What are we doing? Honestly, though, it's not just on felony. Can Clay pretend to want to be there? Can we do that at all at some point? Like, do we want to go to another listening where they're down by a few points and Clay's already decided that he's off to his cowboy rave in the evening? You know, he's had enough for the day. Got dressed up, the hat's on, the nails are painted. I'm like, are we... Do we want to be a Procod player still? Like, is that actually what we're trying to do? Or are we just writing out the contract until inevitable retirement? Like, I genuinely have my questions on what Clay's future is in the league. Because this level of performance against this team, these 10 points matter, brother. Champs qualification is important. Just what I saw from Clay this series, and look, I know that it's online bullshit, right? And these guys live for the LAN events. But online COD is here to stay. Ain't going anywhere. And Clay's vibes in these listenings have pissed me off for years. <laughs> and they've pissed off fans for years. They must piss off his teammates. They, I've refused to believe that Gwyn is sitting there hearing Clay moan about stuff and not call out mid series sometimes. When did, when, did when, 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 did when did I say this? I said this like a few weeks back. You remember that Ace where we listened? Where, I think it was in his watch party. Yeah, we were, we were watch partying. We heard Clay. And he dies, and he's like, oh, oh, two over there. And that's the reason I got dropped, by the way. I got dropped because it, it looked like I didn't want to be there. The way that I looked is the way that Clay looks now. So he has to look like he wants to be there to game because it don't look like he does right now. And I know this is, Clay, I know this is Clay's mentality, but... You got to show the young guys that you want it just as much as they do. Okay. If you're Clay though, and you have been playing COD for ten plus years, you've won chips. What do you do when you just see guys doing dumb things on the map, continually? Would you not be frustrated? 
Would you not be? Oh yeah, but we're, we're making out like clay drop in one point. <laughs> yeah, we're making out like we're making out like clay drop in one point sixes. Uh, I don't. Okay, it's okay. I don't think he's dropping one point. He's not gonna do that. But at the same time, I do think when you have someone going point six, and you also have Fellow and TJ who tend to, you know, TJ shooting. Don't get me wrong. TJ looks like a different player, especially in respawns, than he has in multiple years of COD. Does that mean though he's making the right play always in respawn? No. Fellow clearly is getting shit on. So I could tell some of the frustrations that a player of the caliber of Clay is feeling mid game. I, that's kind of the wrong time to do it. So I, wrong, you know, right place. There's a place for everything, but I do get some of his frustrations when you're such a talented player that's stuck in a circumstance with, with not much success, to be honest. So I'll give him that cheese. But at the same time, yeah, you got to be a good teammate in order for your team to progress and for people to want to learn from you. Clay does probably have the, you know, one of the, the most or up there with the top knowledge of the game of Call of Duty in general in this league right now. He just needs to be able to have teammates that are open to listening to him, opening to his suggestions and be able to learn from him. If you're someone who's not very personable or people are just annoyed with, you're not going to be able to get a message across if your teammates don't like you. Let's go to Fellow though, because Fellow is an interesting case point of this entire thing at what point do you decide to let go of fellow and pick up a player for online cod carolina's best chance to make it to champs and to get good placings for these lands even if they are all land players is to play well online they don't live in the same city they don't have a facility you know uh, they're generally in different places so you just need some absolute online warrior warriors to shoot I, I imagine fellow was replaced by geo right the way geo's playing we haven't seen him we haven't seen him on the main stage on land uh for challengers chance we did but not on the cdl stage but this team i think would be in a very different position if you had a player like that who clearly is dominating online um, there's a lot of other names here we talk we like to talk about lag oh they should make a two-man change and wow they could be better but Carolina could actually be a really good team if you just fixed one piece. I like Fellow. We sat with Fellow. But the reality is he's underperforming online. Unless he comes in in Major 2 at the Major and piss slams everybody and they get a top 4 placing, you got to consider Fellow being the guy to, to leave this team and, and get someone who can perform for you online. This is the worst AR duo in the league. <laughs> like, I thought Assault and Diamond Cobb were bad. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked. No, you can't. No, you actually can't say that the worst AR duo in the league when they beat Assault and Diamond Con. Ah, he you got your ass I there. I don't think he's got. I don't think he's got me there though, because like. Oh, know, wait, no, 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 no. We're not. Wait, we're not. No, let's no, no, let's, let's just do numbers. Rab, we're not. Rab, we're not doing this, bro. We're not doing this. Point eight seven. Point eight three. They're not the worst on land. I'll give them that. I mean, no, look no, at no, this, no, bro. no. They are. They are the second. They are the second worst AR duo in the league. You can't say they're worse than the team that they just beat. Okay, okay. Maybe I'll give you that a little bit. Point eight seven. I will probably have to give you that. Actually, point eight seven. And that's a, point listen, 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 Rab. I'm, I'm, I'm hey, not good. saying. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Right. Technically, it's great. Was, but yeah, Wait, wait I, I have, I'm not. Go, go, go. I'm not saying they're great, but <clears throat> it's like it's like watching two idiots fight each other. You know, it's it, <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's 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 not great stuff. Wait, I have a um, devil's advocate question. Ready? Like a winner's. Bracket spot is still is still potentially on for them. Go so, on. What, what should Devil's Advocate? Do I got Devil's Advocate though. Ready? Devil's Advocate. Who mm. makes what change makes a bigger impact on the team? Changing fellow or changing assault? Changing fellow. Chat. Yeah, they already think... have they, 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 they already have the foundation. They're just lacking AR kills. I think and... Uh, gorillas are just shit no matter what. <laughs> Like it doesn't matter. Change of soul is still. What's wrong with you, man? I think I I think if you look at it this way, it's you really you do a one you do a one man change on LAG for assault, they're still the same. You do a one man change on Ravens, I think they get a little bit better. That's a good point. I, I think I think that's a that's a fair point, honestly. I just want I just want to see what Chad, what you guys thought of of those two squads and how how held back they are by one of their ARs in this sense, right? I thought what you were going to say, yeah. Ace, was like, what makes more impact? Get rid of Fellow or get rid of Clay? And I Ooh. think that'd be an interesting question. Like, imagine well, Clay was just to say, you know what, I've had enough of this. And 
Well, listen, end of the day... I don't know what they would do if that case. But I, saw, I saw someone just say it in the chat. Clay might become worse. We've got to stop making out like Clay's playing amazing. Clay can't but, get much worse. But, <laughs> listen, hear up. me out. If Fellow's dropping 0.6s, 0.5s, whatever he's dropping, Clay's having to do two AR jobs. That's true. If someone else, if someone else picks up the kills and then Clay can go, you know, makes it easier on Clay. Um... I think, yeah, the fe the fellow makes clay better. That probably does need to stop. Um, I think what makes clay you better is up on stream ace as well. I just sent it in the chat. Yeah, I, I, I think what ma I think what makes clay better is someone who can get some kills. Because we all yeah. know clay can sit. We all know clay can sit there and shoot. Like clay can shoot. It's not he's not shit. He, he just needs to. What he needs is someone that can shoot, and he needs to get some passion back. It's just they brought in Felony for the vibes. Let's be honest. Like, good player, but he wasn't the most talented option out there. But because they have the experience with Brian Saint and with Clay, they went for Felony. And understandably. Yeah, don't, don't even get me started on that. But, like, if, if the vibes are still shit, what are we doing? Like, let's be real. If the vibes were good when he first joined, they did well at Major 1. They should, probably should have placed better than they did. They I have played that, well at least. Bit I of have a that graphic period. for you right here. Up. Yeah, just a bit of a total comparison here between turtle. <laughs> the AR. Uh, the a I didn't mean to say like that. Turtle comparison between the AR I duos. I thought you were calling them turds. <laughs> oh, fuck? okay. I could have done that, but I'm not. I, what do you? Come on, don't disrespect me, Trey. I'm, I'm very fair. I never roast players. What do you mean? You just called them shit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'm right. Look at the numbers. Worst down yeah, but you can't sit there and say, come on, I'm nice. You literally just said, oh, I think if you change anyone in LAG, they're still shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on, on Trey's point, though, that if you give Clayster a better... If you give Clayster three slayers... Wait, Felony has no kills, bro. Okay, he has less maps played. That, well, that, well, we did kills you know, for series. To be fair, yeah, he's just not shooting back. Kills for 10. But even kills for 10, look at it in half point. If Worst of the salt. Listen, if you give Clay a different AR and a, and p three people on his team that can do the right plays and shoot back, he can be the leader that gets you to a Sunday, that gets you to a chip. I mean, that, that's a little bold, but at least gets you to a Sunday, to a top four. And he's done that timeless, you know, t you know, with different rookies in his career. He's found talent. He's not the guy that we're, we're doubting in any way in that regard. So I think it's yet to be seen what Clayster's full potential with Gwyn and TJ is because you have fellow that's, again, hurting how good Clay can be and how much of a leader Clay can be. But when he's frustrated, when his teammates are getting shit on, it's not going to bring the best side of Clay. Best side of Clay is when you have two rookies or two or three players on his team that are going crazy and he can amplify their skill level amplify their knowledge and be the glue to these combo of slaying players so i think if you get a different player in for fellow some you know some challengers player that's frying some ar that's reliable you actually could i think you could, you could see a different side of clay not only in the comms but in the game and his numbers will reflect that change uh hopefully not hopefully i don't want fellow to get so, dropped but into major three four and into champs so this is what needs to happen. Ravens need to make two changes. Ah, oh, shit. They need to get rid of Fellow. And the second change is Clay needs to change the way he is. The way he acts in game. I, I, I can agree. Like, Gwyn and TJ are probably sat there losing full, but they can't say anything to Clay. You know what I'm saying? We know this. We, everyone said it. Everyone's seen it. Rab, you said it. Clay looks like he doesn't want to be there. The only thing Clay needs to change when they get so if they get someone else in, you never know. Fellow might fry this fucking major, and then we're back to square one. Yeah, because we, you know, fellow fellow is better on land. Yeah, but he's not that That's good. That's almost land. concerning though, because like if you yeah, no, 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 it is, it is. But my point you don't is, don't want that to happen. No, you. D I no, mean, you, but you have you a don't, case you like out slasher and stuff too. You can't say that's like a bad thing. Slasher on land, it's not a bad thing. Different animal. But, but it's not a bad thing. But you can't be this inconsistent online. Like you just can't. But what Clay needs to do is lock it the fuck in, show the boys that he wants to be there. And I'm not saying he doesn't right now. I'm not saying he's like being a dick or anything like that. But you know, you went to your argument, Ace, about he's been doing this for so long. Blah 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 blah. You know. Other athletes do it. 
they've been doing it for so long, so this, so that, and they're still like that's the reason they are the best of the best. You know, you look at you no, know, you want to go with Braun, Ronaldo, all that kind of stuff. Like they get angry during a match, but they lock it the fuck back in straight away, back to business. You know, that's the reason they're the best in what they do. And if Clay can manage to do that now, I guarantee if they get a different player that's dropping kills around him, they will be a way better team. Maybe even like fifth. They, they would be competing. Yeah. Uh, I think the last, the last thing I have to say about Carolina too is they have a chance at a winner's bracket spot and their match is winnable, right? You, this, is a, this is a toss-up match. Who's going to win, Legion or Carolina? For both teams, this is very impactful for Legion in terms of where they end up, what, what part of the winner's bracket they end up. And for Carolina, this is the difference maker between whether they get in or don't get in, basically. Um, Rocker has to win. And if they lose, they're out. They're, they don't make winners. So, I don't know. I think they have one week here. Whatever's going on with Fellow's internet, he needs to hit up all the internet gurus that are on Twitter and fix whatever problem he's having because they need to lock it in, close out this last qualifier match, get to winners, and they could honestly turn their 11th place season around with just like one win at, at this tourney. Winners, one win, all of a sudden your season is looking different. And you have a chance to actually make some noise, make champs. And whether you keep felony or not, you're in a much better position if you can just lock in, win this map, match next week, and, and actually make winners for once. Yeah. I don't know. I think that, that's, that's my take. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. That's pretty fully, much what it fully, is, fully, fully, fully agree. We've, we've spoken. It's just like this season is so achievable. Like, there's so many dog shit teams that if you just lock in and actually make a couple of improvements you can actually do pretty well like top sixes championship sundays are on the cards if you actually believe in your teammates and believe that you can succeed champs qualification is certainly on the cards like all it takes know. is one fuck up from a top team and you're f third yeah not, not even a, not, it doesn't you don't even need the top the top four are, are kind of not even out of reach but they're so ahead all one win let's say carolina get a win next week in this whole season standings, all of a sudden they are tied for eighth. They go from eleventh to eighth with one win, a single win. So there's a there's a big there's a big chance for huge movements in the bottom eight slots or bottom seven slots. And excuse the, me, fifth through. And 12. the top four team, the top four teams are only ahead based on teamwork and the fact they want to play with each other. Everyone can shoot straight. Some people can shoot you know straighter than others, but like you know, teamwork is a big factor. You know, we looked at, look at Rocker, for example, Ace. The only reason they're, you know, <laughs> where they are right now is because they choked. Yeah. If they didn't choke, if they didn't choke, I promise you they would be in top four contention or like, you know, beaten or coming close to beating the top teams in like everything. Yeah. I'm not saying to win the event, but the only thing that's costing them is choking that series versus Optic. I mean, not just they. What they have and and game five, five game five losses, that, four game five losses just in major two, and it and it uh, and you know, like I said, I don't think they're a bad team, but I think their you know confidence is choked. They could have been five and one. It's true. Instead, they're one of instead they're one and five, and you know, it, all it takes is one fuck up moment like that, and. <laughs> you're one and six <laughs> you know you've gone from you've gone from three you know two european bums of me and rab and you know <laughs> you know the, the be, you know one of the best looking people in texas right now mr ace basically saying you're a top four team or in contention to now you know you need to drop a player and you're not looking good even even that argument is still just funny because again they're in overall fifth place 85 points 15 ahead of seattle seattle are looking in the gutter so in re and seattle and mine the two teams that are have the ability to catch up to them are actually like Vegas. Yeah, no, they're in it. They're in a good spot for sure. Yeah, they have like a 30 point buffer between Thebes yeah. and Legion, whereas Seattle and Miami both are on a downside slope. I think Miami's on a, or not Miami, excuse me. Minnesota's just kind of on a, either a mid ground or upside slope, to be honest. So it's a good position for them in, in total. And in this major, the fact that they can make it to winners, I think Rocker to me still, I'll say it again, and I know y'all will call me crazy. The top teams would least like to play Legion or Rocker. I think if you're if you're I, playing anyone else, you're not that worried. But if you play one of those two teams, you're actually a little concerned that, that you might get smoked. I'm I'm okay with where they're at because all it takes is you know if they make winners bracket, 
all it takes is two wins and you've made your points back that you lost online. Literally. You know, or, 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 or near so. So I'm okay if I'm them. I really do hope Wake actually, you know, excuse the pun, but wakes the fuck up this major in respawns <laughs> because because they were like I I dead serious like they actually will dominate like they are they've got the tools they've got lens I want Vivid to have a better, better you know better few showings too because he's been looking you know a bit a bit rusty a bit shaky but you know I'm not counting them out I just I just I just knew this I knew as soon as they lost that match to Optic that this would be where they were at you know that's why I called it when it happened. Yeah, I, I want to put out one more thing about just Rocker in general. Is that Linz and Hardpoint now has gone from their their top damage dealer to their lowest damage dealer in Hardpoint. I want to add that in there. Just so that, I know, I love that. I love the kid. I love the team. Obviously, uh, cheese, cheese, cheese. Whatever you want to say. But that's one thing about them in general that I've watched uh, in this this split versus the last one is that Linz's Hardpoint uh, has taken a dive a little bit. Maybe in terms of KD's okay. But the same way we talk about Afro in terms of being a, sl a slow sub sometimes, Linz has that problem where he, where he doesn't push up or he'll play slower than he needs to, and that hurts his team, especially uh, in hardpoint. Uh, so I do think Linz needs to step up in terms of his hardpoint play. Which Linz again, needs to step up. I, I, no, I, yeah. no, listen, listen. I hate this thought. I hate that you did that right there. I hate that you did that. I hate that you did that, Rav, because I know the cheese and everyone is going to call me faded, faded, faded. But trust me, if I could give it's you... too easy. If I could give anyone praise, trust me, I will, you, would, you would know me. The chat knows that I would give it to Rocker. But I'm going to call out the positives and negatives of every team genuinely and honestly. And Linz needs to get faster and be more in the mix when it comes to hardpoint like he was in Major 1 when Rocker were doing better in hardpoints than they are now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. You could look at the damage numbers to some degree. Also, when you're a sub player, it, often it's the AR. Okay, let's say I'm in the hill. I've got my AR looking over me. He's tagging up the guy. I'm finishing him off. So, okay, you've got to look at you all the numbers, now? right? Like, <laughs> okay, come on, Trey. <laughs> I'm not just looking at the damage per 10, I'm also looking at kills per 10, engagement per 10, stuff like this. I think you all have to kind of consider narrative. But, look, yeah, Haslin's not been as good this stage as he was stage so far. Absolutely. But they're also one in five. So, it's uh, we'll see. They could still get to winners for the. It's not impossible. Yeah, very, um, very, very if likely. They do get to winners. They're gonna play New York or New Optic, York, so New we'll York or Optic, which is honestly, I think best case scenario because they obviously had close series against Optic, and then New York they have that little bit of leverage against them because they kicked him out of tournament one. So it's almost like a mental stigma. You have actually playing his son Sib. It's a very interesting. And then his other son Pred. It's very interesting kind of dynamics that happen between those two teams. So I think I think it's written in the cards. I think it's written in the fortune and the cards, in the script, if you would, in the CDL script that Rocker comes in and Lamar has to sun his sons once more out of their winner's bracket spot. I think that's what has to happen. But uh, is, is there anything else that we want to talk about in terms of the CDL matches or no? I I'm think we covered it. I, I think yeah. we, we, what we, we, we got to say is that like going into the major... <laughs> These teams know that there's a bit of a break after the this is this is prove it or you get dropped time. Because, yeah, this is this is this is literally you know, this is it basically. Play well or you've lost your job. Like that's that's <laughs> it. Like, play well, lost your job. Like it it, it, it it that's how hard hitting the CDL is. Play well, lost your job. You know, it happens to a bunch of people. You play well, you end up in challenges. Yeah, the re the recency bias of the CDL is with teams with gms with coaches and with fans it's all across the board so if you're not performing um and i think we've called out quite a few players this stage that are underperforming and hurting whether their, their team's chances all around um but overall guys next week we have the final implication of the final stretch of matches before miami we have they're gonna have the final brackets the winner's bracket will be solidified for miami uh Guys, it's just such an exciting... We're going to have a great show next week again. Make sure to come next week as well. Like, subscribe if you haven't. Next week, same time, um, Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Dope Check, episode 12 will be live. And again, Friday, if, you're not, if you don't know, the Dope Check pre-show happens before the CDL matches. Come an hour and a half before the Probably matches Probably the most exciting thing about that Friday will be the Dope Check pre-show. Absolutely. Because the matches are dog shit. 
Absolutely. We're, we're going to be having a silly goose time, speculating, talking the matches, previewing the matches, saying, talking more about the implications of the different winners bracket spots. So make sure be here Friday, an hour and a half before matches start, which I believe would be 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Correct? 1.30 p.m. Plan, Eastern time. Ish. Dope check pre-show Friday. But besides that, guys, from Ace the Stocksman, Tactical Rab, and Trey Zero, that is Dope Check episode 11. Thank you for being here. We'll see you guys next time. We'll see you on Friday. And thanks for checking us out. See you guys.